Oddies, late night movies with Rob and Zach. This is a podcast about cinematic oddies where we discuss any media that is too bizarre, abnormal, or off kilter for contemporary audiences. Occasionally, these projects gel. Most times, they crash hard into the realm of obscurity. Join us as we delve into the cult classic swamp. I'm Zach. And I haven't seen Pussy in so long, the crack of dawn looks good to me. Which is a line I don't fully understand. <laughs> <I think. laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's what we're dealing with this episode. That's how I'm starting. Uh, I think the only other one I could have done is, um, I'm getting horny, so am I, <laughs> as horns pop out of the guy's well, head, well, which is pretty wonderful. <laughs> but we also have the greatest line of dialogue of all time. I hear Raisin Bran is pretty good. Okay, snacks. <laughs> We've exhausted the three most interesting things yeah, about giant, this. giant, like, cardboard box that says cornflakes. Cornflakes, yeah. I guess we should talk. They're going to break the 180-degree rule. No, no, we are here to finish up Monstober with something called Scary Tales. And in my, my background uh, research for this, I basically dove into, you know, Zach gave me the name, he gave me the year, that's enough to pinpoint it. And, and basically I wrote down, I've never seen this before, never heard of it, of course, there seems to be some information about it on the internet, but very little. So this is very much one of those things that Zach is carrying the torch for. I wanted to ask this before we actually, you know, watched it together, just before this recording. But now I'm even more interested to know, how the hell did you find out about this, Zach? I, my, my guess, which I don't know for okay. sure, is that this is something they covered on, uh, Red Letter Media covered on Half in the Bag. Is that true? No. No? Okay, so how, so then how did you find this? Because that's what I was thinking this would have been perfect for. No, this isn't Spookies. That's Spookies. Uh, which okay. I have, which is on the short list to Monster. It's on many short lists. <laughs> the short list ain't that short anymore. <laughs> but, um, no, no, Red Letter Media, it's funny, like, in my research right now, it's looking at stuff, because, like, we deliberately went to this extremely blind. Yes. Apparently, Doug Ulrich, the director of this, mm-hmm was apparently in cahoots he worked with Don Doler, who is like a red letter yeah. media darling. Sure. They adore Don Doler, which actually explains a lot. Um, no, what happened was was that the the label that produced this, much like we talked about Criterion, Arrow, all these other kind of like boutique like home video labels. Yep. This is done by American Genre Film Archive, which yeah. I think I we never talked about it officially though, but it's definitely been like in the ether is Wicked World. Yes, yes, of course. In, they they do a lot of this weird independent, yes. you know, cleanup transfers and, they and find, release. They find of garbage. They, garbage they, is a good I, way to put it. I would it. call it a like dumpster label. They find <laughs> nonsense, hoping that idiots like me will just be like, <laughs> this cover looks interesting. But no, basically, again, this obviously ties into uh, Red Letter Media because what happened was Red Letter Media talked about Wicked World. It looked mm-hmm. bonkers. I bought a copy of it. Yep. It's been on the list for a while. It's just like truly like inexplicable cinema. Yeah. Not even pure cinema. It's inexplicable cinema yes Um, i think it gets mentioned um probably close to 87 days from now at the end of our jupiter ascending episode (laughs) it shows up it shows up periodically it's one of those movies that i've had now for what almost two years yes um but no because again red Leader media just talked about that i bought a copy of it and then i want to say like in late 2019 or so there was a movie called scary movie that came out in early 90s and rob always says the Wayans Brothers, <laughs> every time I bring it up. But they also released that movie, and okay. that is a very odd movie. Like, it's it's probably scary. It's not vignettes, but, like, it's okay. that same. It's, it's better. It's probably the best, like, low-budget horror movie you can do. So have you watched that one? Yeah. I, watched, I haven't I, gotten to that one yet. Yeah, it's, 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 it's decent. Like, I've, I've been tempted to. It's funny. That's the thing about these, like, AGF, like, Blu-ray covers. They're always really visually striking yeah like, i have to say this is a great cover i mean when when you just told me the title not interesting i almost said interesting striking striking is probably the better way to put it uh th- this cover gets undercut a little bit because from holly horror on letterbox the pull quote is super charming <laughs> i don't know if i'd use charming <laughs> no, for this no. but the cover is striking and like i said when, when you gave me the title in the year and i was like making the episode logo for for this release I saw this exact picture. So, you know, everybody, whoever's listening to this, you know, can check out our episode logo. You'll see this cover. And it is striking. It's one of those things where I'm like, if this is the monster in the movie, I'm going to be into it. Yeah. I want to see this guy, like, the slash pro- some people. The prof is, spoiler alert, the cover art monster is not in the movie. And if he is in the movie, it's the it's the narrator, or not the narrator, the um the bumpers. I guess. And the wraparound. The wraparound, but we don't even see the wraparound's face. That's, it's just the the silhouette of the Grim Reaper. Or we think we call him the Grim Reaper. What we think is, I think it and, is Craig. Yeah, the Grim and two bright eyes. So we don't get to see the detail, which is on this, looks like whatever almost comes, an illustration. Whatever. You know? that's, that's the thing. I, 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 
I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of that. Like, <laughs> yeah, inexplicable. A lot of bafflement, yeah. Yeah, bafflement. If, uh, if, uh, I, guess, I guess before we jump into any further, um, because I, I think you've been getting it, you know, how you found this. Last Monstover, we finished things up with Treehouse of Horror. Yeah. And we talked about how, oh, maybe this is something we do. Maybe next year or the following years we'll do the next five and the next five or something like that. And that, of course, when Zach was pitching Monstober, that was something I brought up. Which is, oh, do we want to go back to Treehouse of Horror and do six through ten because we did one through five last year? And I Spoiler think, alert, no. No, of course. But Choosing I think, Treehouse of Horror was a punt on my part. Yeah, floor. and I, we had fun with it. It's a long episode. We goofed around with a lot of it. But I think we, we both agreed when we decided not to do that where it was like, Eh, we listened back to that episode. It was one of the um, more like anthology type episodes where we were just like running through stuff, and we wanted to dive into something deeper. And of course, you know, Zach gets to pick it. Um, I think it's a little ironic that our we we ditched our anthology type episode for an anthology film. Yeah, we're, we're, there's a lot of patterns here. Even to the beginning of Monster, where we talked about like how Budweiser was a character in Candy yeah. and Candyman. <laughs> yep. In this, Budweiser does show up. Yes, of course, of course, with cornflakes and raisin bran and all that stuff. So yeah, here we are discussing scary tales. I mean. I don't know. Was there anything we wanted to say at the start? Any? I don't know. Are there any tangents we can go on before yeah, we get to this movie? This is a mon- this is gonna be the Monstober. Where like in years past, I will go much like how Rob goes back to Goosebumps. I've recently been going back to Monstober on cinema. He's yeah. like, oh, this is fun. Gets me in the mood of it all. It gets the creative uh, juices flowing yeah, for yeah. like what I want to pick. And this is kind of a bust of a Monstober. <laughs> I'd say outside of like Friday the Thirteenth. That was a good one. Yeah. Um, Candyman was a dud. Candyman was a dud. Fun discussion. Dud of a a thing. Yeah, yeah. kind of a dud. Um, And this is just kind of like, what the hell? There's one in Monstober that you will have heard that we have not recorded yet, which should be Which could change, possibly. It could, (laughs) because we've kind of now had 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 the feelings. So far, Monstober is like... Success wise, one out of three. So I might need to salvage it. <laughs> At least get us into the fifty percentile. Sure, sure. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, that'll be recorded. Um, that, the Sometime one time in a couple. The weeks. one episode in Monstober where the audio quality is better. <laughs> That's the one. The last one we recorded. Um, so okay. I mean, anything else? I mean, I guess we'll get to all the bookkeeping with uh, Cinemonies at the end. Um, I guess yeah. So scary tales. If anyone hasn't seen it, uh, Zach mentioned directed by Doug Ulrich. The other guy that we said was to blame. I think that was your exact words. He's just, as, he's just as culpable. You know, he doesn't put his name. Yeah, it was what um, Al Al Dorego, as Al we Dorigo, learned the yes. pronunciation. El Dorado. Of. El Dorado. Yes. Which we're both going to slowly sing at the calling. Him sure. Now, Al Dorago sure. is a lot. It's too similar do to El Dorado. Do we mispronounce? Because we have. Do we mispronounce someone's name every Monstober? Because we have uh, Panini Cosmonaut from Mandy from the first okay. Monstober. Um, I think we, one of them was Doctor Sleep, right? Was that in a Monstober, or was that just... No, I can't that's remember. Backwards. And so, um, but I'm thinking that, you know, you, you you never call him Ewan McGregor. You call him Ewan McDonald. McDonald. Yes. Ewan so, McDonald. And know. then last year, I can't remember all of the uh, the Monstobers, even though that's the closest Monstober. <laughs> maybe maybe that's anymore. our theme of, of mispronouncing people's names in Monstober. Because <laughs> what? Last Monstober was Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 2003. Oh, second, Zach's and, return. Oh, the manslaughterer. Yes. Oh, the manslaughter. Okay, okay, that that makes perfect. You said if you're a true fan of cinema, you know exactly who we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. We said the manslaughter. The manslaughter. Okay, okay. So, scary tales is about seventy minutes. We think maybe even a little less <laughs> from timing it uh, or me watching the clock. It's an anthology film shot on VHS. Yes, shot, shot on VHS. Around Baltimore, Maryland, in the early nineties. Yep, yep. It's uh, it's three segments. What Satan's necklace is the first one. About a man whose necklace possesses him with a, with Satan or a demon. I'm not sure. We don't know. Uh, this is clear. The second one is my favorite title. It's sliced in cold in cold blood. How do you say that? Cold blood is one word. Cold blood. Cold blood. Cold blood. Cold blood. Cold blood. Cold blood. I don't even want to say blood. I want a blood. Like cold blood. blood. Like if, imagine. I feel like cold, cold blood would be somebody's last name. You know. Yes. Be like, hi, I'm Rob Cold Blood. What, what nationality is that? <laughs> um, uh, Marylandian. <laughs> <laughs> Baltimore, Hillbilly. <laughs> Hillbilly. So sliced in cold blood, which is loosely about a guy snapping after finding his wife cheating on him and then going on a rampage, we think. But we don't know who and that somehow, guy is. And somehow it's played as a huge reveal at the end because his face is obscured the entire yeah. time. Even though halfway through the segment it said the character's name who we're supposed to believe it is. Yes. And yeah. at the end it, it cuts to his face and it's supposed to be like a big shock. 
And it was not. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I have to say, that segment had my favorite character in the movie. Uh, rapist? Uh, no, not Rapist. <laughs> Credited as Rapist. <laughs> Credited as Rapist. <laughs> We're not just calling him that because he was an attempted rapist. He's Rapist, apparently. So, that's a good point. We see him just talk to the woman about rape in, in that rape. segment. He didn't rape. So, in the movie, he's just, like, attempted assaulter. rapist. Or assaulter. Or just speaking about are rapist. His pants are on. <laughs> but the credits... <laughs> Know something more than we do and call him rapist. So presumably he's raped in the past. <laughs> but we don't get to see that. I kind of like the idea that like, for like, if you're in a trial for rape, it's like, Your Honor, my client clearly did not rape the woman. Yes. I, I, I want to see that defense on an episode of SVU. He couldn't have been the rapist because yes. his pants were on and the zipper was broken. He could not take his fly down. How could he have raped anyone, Your Honor? Um, no, my favorite character is the the hick. Drinking oh, beer God. with the Walkman on outside of his trailer or whatever. And we get the very, and we get like, like a pinch zoom on his belly button. <laughs> yes, that was the weird. Bernice, get me another beer. And then he, well, he sounds like Bobcat Goldthwait. I'll have to put the clip in. And then the wife sounds like a Muppet, which Bob, <laughs> Bobcat Goldthwait also sounds like a Muppet, so it kind of works out perfectly. Hey, Bernice, I need another beer. But then the third segment is just level 21, which is when things get really embarrassing. <laughs> like, I felt embarrassed watching. Because really, it's not scary. It's it you're devol- watching people LARP. <laughs> it basically devolves into a bunch of nerds sword fighting in the woods. A hundred percent. Which is embarrassing it, no matter how you look. Yeah. There's no good way to make nerds fighting in the woods look cool. Yes. My, my letterbox review for this was... This movie got progressively harder to watch, and my embarrassment for the actors grew throughout. <laughs> it was, it's kind of surprising. If anybody looks at my letterbox this, this past week when we've recorded this, um, I gave Candyman 2021 and Scary Tales the same rating of one star. <laughs> They're on the same level to me. So, Zach, what do you want to do? You want to go through it by segment? Was there, oh, wait, no, no hold on. There's, there's actual important background context okay. for this one. We have to talk about the bastion of truth known as IMDb trivia. Oh, Jesus. There are two IMDb trivia facts for this movie. That's 100% more than I expected. Exactly. One of them is uninteresting. I didn't even write it down. The second one is only the words, this movie was shot on weekends. <laughs> so That's literally the most interesting thing that could be said about yep, this movie. Yep. Uh, I didn't check how many people found that fact interesting. Um, not enough. Not enough. I, I never rate those facts on IMDb. Um, so I don't know if I, I think I would find it interesting. Two out of two found this interesting. Two out of two. So what was the other, we're we're going to break fact. It is all the individual segments had been previously made as short films. Oh, which we actually saw, we fast forwarded through on the Blu-ray that Zach bought. Okay. okay. I'm going to break the stats, Rob. I'm going to both give these thumbs down. I'm going to break this. Nice. Do you need an account on IMDb to vote on that? Okay. That's why. If I've ever tried, I can't do it. So it's it's three segments. I guess, do we want to go through it by segment now that yeah, we got the important, it was shot on weekends context out of the way? Um, it was shot on weekends. It definitely was, sh- it was not shot sequentially because shit goes from day to night constantly. Uh, there's one grocery store scene that I don't think I mentioned it when we were watching it. It looks like it was shot at night while people were stocking the shelves. That was our Raisin Bran scene. Um, well, well, maybe, Zach, how about we do it? We start this way. What was your favorite segment out of the three? Did you have a favorite? If I had to pick one, I'd say the first one, but I'd like the wraparound with the Grim Reaper and the eyes and the smoke. Oh, that, I like should focus it, more on that than anything that was, else. That is like yeah. maybe a combined amount of screen time of maybe, what, 50 seconds? 50 seconds, 40 to, 40 to 60 seconds, somewhere in there. And that is more visually interesting than everything else combined. So you hit the nail on the head. It's visually interesting. It is wildly upsetting to me that the wraparound or the intros, as they are for these segments is a one-sentence summary, and then the name of the segment, and then when it cuts to the segment, it shows us the title again. Like, that is redundant, and I didn't like that. I wish we had a little more, I don't know, maybe, you know, Crypt Keeper-esque uh, personality to those things. I think, though, we learned something at the start of the third segment that we didn't know while watching the previous two segments and recontextualized the entirety of the film. The Grim Reaper is telling these stories to children. Yes. And we... He calls them children, and we hear children's voices. So here's the thing that Zach and I were laughing at at a certain point, as he looks up The Prophet of Oz on IMDb. <laughs> he, he, also he up, directed by Doug Ulrich. Okay, okay. As he looks up anything but this movie. So the, the idea is that the Grim Reaper is reading these scary tales to these children. 
So Zach and I got a kick out of the fact that there had to be certain points where the Grim Reaper is explaining things we're watching to children. Which are things like, you know, oh, in the second segment, the wife goes to cheat on the husband. There's a very weird just segment where the, the two adults, the, the wife... Adulterers. Adulter, yes, the two adulterers. The adult adulterers are standing in the kitchen and they're just kissing each other. And when they break from kissing each other, they're saying very strange things. Like, do we have wine from last night? No, but I got a bottle of champagne downstairs. Let me go get it. Go back to kissing. But one is that they say something like, you know, I forget who it was. I'll have to put the clip in. Where it was something like, you know, they're, they're kissing, they break, and one of them says... You know, should we, should I fuck, well, you could fuck me, or I could fuck you, or we could fuck each other. Go back to kissing. It's, it's infinitely more drawn out. Than oh, it's so slow. Yes, everything in this, this whole movie is slow. And, and so, then they go back to kissing, they break, and the guy says, I fucked you last night, you fucked me the day before, so why not tonight we fuck each other? So now, just picture this. So, what's on the agenda for today? Well... You could fuck me, or I could fuck you, or we could fuck each other. Hmm. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Well, let's see. I fucked you last night, and you fucked me the day before, so why don't we fuck each other? Sounds good to me. Just picture a demonic figure saying this to children. <laughs> And the demonic figure is not enunciating well. You know, it has that voice thing over it. It's somebody talking through a mask. Exactly. So Zach and I were laughing at the fact of, you know, and then the man said... Because <laughs> he has to read it like a book, you know? And then the man said, well, last night I fucked you. <laughs> and the night before you fucked me. <laughs> because that's that. we have to believe that's what's happening, right? It's not like, you know, we're getting visual and things. Then the, the hillbilly man said, Bernice, <laughs> get me another beer. And oh, then my God. The living Muppet brought the beer <laughs> through the screen. I'm <laughs> coming! <laughs> it's, it's one of the weirdest things. And I guess we did, since we learned the fact that it's children hearing these stories in between the it's second Al, and third what, do we segment, out, It's like Al Dorado's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's definitely them? some, yeah, yeah. There's definitely some family relations that's, you know, they got to sit around. I'm sure they didn't tell the kids, you know. Well, now I'm thinking I would have loved if they actually filmed someone reading the script to the children, oh, you know? Right. That would be wonderful. That would be better than the rest of this movie. All I want to say is that child abuse takes many forms. Right, exactly. That's all I want to say. Exactly. Um, so, th since we learned about this between the second and the third segments, I don't think we really thought about the first segment in that context. No. Because there is some... All the, the themes of a lot of these are adult. Maybe the last one is the most child-friendly. Guess. Because there's no real sex stuff in it or anything like that. But, you know, the second segment is about, you know, adultery and, and, and killing. The first segment is also about killing. There's sexual stuff. And there's sexual stuff, you know, like uh, like the, the quote I said, I haven't seen pussy in so long, the crack of tone looks good to me. I would love... We see some very awkward dry humping. It, we see some dry humping, we see vomiting blood, you know, that type Numerous of thing. Numerous times. I would have loved... Maybe the, the, the thing that we need to do in the Cinemodities production house is remake scary tales, but cut in more of the Grim Reaper telling this stuff to kids. Because I think this would be great if during, like, say, the first segment, when, you know, and then, you know, Fred, not Fred, whatever, the, John, I don't know, I don't know his fucking name. <laughs> then the two men, after out all night drinking at the bar to drown their sorrows, they go out for a morning metal detector <laughs> sweep. And as they're talking about his divorce and how his wife is fucking his bo her boyfriend in his own bed and she took the house. And he still pays the mortgage on. He says, I haven't seen pussy in so long. The crack of dawn looks good to me. Cut back to the kids. What does that mean? <laughs> like, I want more of that. I want children editorializing what we're hearing in the story. I think that's the that's way actually, to make this a masterpiece. That's actually a great idea. Yeah! That's actually, that's a great way. Like, we would get more of the visuals of the Grim Reaper. We would get more shit hilarious that for us to laugh at. And there's so much of that. We could have things like, you know, the cuts to the Grim Reaper being like, and then, you know, as, as she is riding him so hard and sexy on top. Because that's what they would be in the script. It does not look sexy. It's a great unsexy sex scene. <laughs> but in the script, I'm sure they're, Doug Ulrich and, and Al Durago were like, oh, it's sensual. Oh, they're getting in the mood. You know, maybe they haven't fucked for a long time because she makes 
it's like slop for dinner, you know. <laughs> she goes, it was like cold gruel, you know. The stove was not on, as Zach mentioned. And, you know, it's, it's supposed to be all sexy. And then she turns into a demon and she vomits blood's on his face. And maybe in the script even, the Grim Reaper would say, and she vomits blood as soon as he climaxes. And it cuts to the kids like, I don't like this anymore. Daddy wants a climax. <laughs> I need an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the way to like save some of this. I stuff. feel like this is like Rod's version of combining like mystery science theater and like wonder shows. In. <gasps> oh, that would be this great. This feels like you take it's like you take old crap yeah. cinema, cinema in quotation marks, and you merge it with explaining it to children. That's the perfect actual thing because. Remember those segments from Wonder Shows where they would take those old black and white educational videos and just have the kids say lines over it? Like, one is, like, the, um, the, uh, the chicken, pro, uh, uh, chicken factory where they, like, cut up the chicken and butcher it and make all the different products. And the, and the kids are saying stuff like, you know, these chickens died so I can be hung, I can be happy or something like that. That, you're exactly right. Well, we need I, more of Wonder well, Shows. I'm convinced <laughs> you could go to Netflix right now with this pitch. Much like Jimmy C. in <laughs> Romeo and Juliet on the Titanic or Zack Snyder where he points, speaking oddly enough, the 9-11 anniversary is tomorrow. Yes. Oh, God, we didn't even mention that. Yeah, we're recording really? on 9-11 Eve. We're going to an amusement park on 9-11 Eve. <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine it's that same level thing Rob's like. Scary Tales, Mystery Science Theater, Wonder Shows It. <laughs> Boom. And Netflix would be like, how many zeros would you like in this check? <laughs> Sound promising though as a concept. Yeah, I think it'd be great. It'd be very low budget. All you gotta do is get some like kids there, like with parents that are very warped, which pretty much all you gotta do is throw a stone out of a window yep. and you'll hit one. Exactly. So like we, we would take a page out of the Sasha Baron Cohen book, you know, if you offer the parents any amount of money, they will let their kids do they'll they'll throw their they will roll their kids at you, I bet, okay. if they can't crawl. <laughs> One thing I want to say is I looked at what Doug Ulrich's uh, last uh, production was, yeah. it's a short called The Prophet of Oz. What year? 2013. Oh, wow. So that almost, recent. Okay. Yeah, 10 years. So he's still alive, at least of 2013. Well, he clearly gave him the rights to this in the last like, year or so. Sure. This sure. was only released, I think, last year. Um, some have all the things that got held up in the pandemic. The Blu-ray <laughs> release of Scary Tales somehow made it through. <laughs> Many things were inhibited or, or just dis- disappeared during the pandemic. And now I'm thinking during the third segment when they're LARPing and be like, and then they had a grand battle between the, the main character and the ninjas. And it cuts to the kids and they're like, nerds! <laughs> <laughs> like the kids are and actively then, against and, the third segment. And then the man in the fluffy vest got impaled. <laughs> And the kids cheer. <laughs> we should say that when the guy with the fluffy vest like thinks he's disarmed, whatever it's supposed to be, the monster. Yeah. The or- turn- it looks like an orc or an something. Orc, yeah. Yeah. Before Lord of the Rings became in vogue. He turns <laughs> around and it looks like he's genuinely laughing. Yes, you asked me, I like, think he he broke great character? character, and I'm like, that's sure what it looks like. <laughs> there's a lot of moments where everyone's breaking character. You can't help yes, it. Like, yes, yes. Want- I, like, I like that we're discussing this, like everybody listening to this episode has seen scary tales or jumping around. But okay. What, what, Can okay, we just 20, say one thing? Rob yes. and I were talking a couple nights ago about the idea of like things getting Blu-ray releases. Mm-hmm. Who would have thought oh, God, that yeah. we live in a world <laughs> where Doug Ulrich's Scary Tales has a Blu-ray yeah, release, yeah. yet Tom Green's Freddy Got Finger does not? It's a war crime. It's a war this crime. Ha- okay, look about that. You know, I'll, I'll make it even more, m- more understandable. Doug Ulrich's Scary Tales has a Blu-ray release. Yet James Cameron's oh God. True Lies yeah. in the Abyss yep. still does not have a Blu-ray release. <laughs> that, that is un, like, unfathomable. I think that's more like just a felony than a war crime, but it's still pretty bad. Yeah, insane. <laughs> Absolutely. That somehow this has been immortalized. Yeah. Like think about it. what's like what? Oh God, what's the half life of like a Blu-ray disc? Yeah, yeah. As long as it's like somewhere <laughs> above like what. 40 degrees, like, Fahrenheit? Yep, yep. In, in what, in what, 25, 35 years from now, when, when this, my trip out to New York just repeats itself, and it starts with Zach doing a yard sale, instead of all the VHSs you were trying to sell, it's going to be all your old Blu-rays. This is 100% This thing. is going to live. This, this yep. is, I, I would be, you know what the sad thing is, at least 50% of Monster over this year will be at a yard sale at some point <laughs> yes, in 20 years. exactly. <laughs> at least 50% of it. Oh, man. Okay, so Doug Ulrich, what did he do in 2013? He made a movie called The Prophet of Oz, okay. which is described as – it's written by Doug Ulrich on IMDb. So we're getting straight from the horse's mouth. Oh, so he even wrote the yes. – okay, I like this. 11-year-old Dorothy falls into the land of Oz where Again. she meets a lovely <laughs> angel of God and the sinister devil. Okay. She's soon off on an adventure where she'll meet the scarecrow, tin man, lion, then eventually the so-called Prophet of Oz. Oh. Who is the prop? What? The so-called. <laughs> the so-called. 
<laughs> and this is the best part. There's a poster. Okay. And it's the most, like, Photoshop. Like, like, imagine, like, somebody's backyard with some trees and, like, the worst version of the Emerald City imaginable. <laughs> okay. And this is what the, te- the poll line is. The Wizard of Oz... With a Christian twist. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't the original Oz books about capital, or not just capitalism, but like forms of economic infrastructure or something like that? That's anything's possible. Sure. Who, that, who wrote Oz? Who, who's the one who did that? I want to say. I might be thinking Frank something just because of Frank Oz. That might not be right. <laughs> Uh, no, I think I want to double down. Like, you misspoke a few weeks ago, or maybe a few months ago, and you said Jillian Anderson wrote Gone Girl. I think Frank Oz wrote The Wizard Frank of Oz. Frank L. Frank Baum. It, okay, Frank was in there. That makes me feel better. Fair enough, Bob. <laughs> that makes me feel a little better. What do you think is a more egregious adaptation of that story? The Prophet of Oz or Oz the Great and Powerful with James mm. Franco? Which one do you think is more offensive? I've seen neither. But just from... Just from what I know about James Franco and Doug Ulrich, I might say the James Franco. Zach Braff is a monkey. Which is something we cannot tack on the Ooh, Prophet of Oz. Yeah, I don't think I like that, though. <laughs> I don't think that makes me That's a detriment. That's yeah. a detriment. <laughs> Zach Braff is a monkey. So I hope somebody takes that out of context. There's a story behind that where apparently that character was like completely... From what I've heard, it was added in post-production. Really? Oh, they, okay. they screened the film for the producers, and they're like, It's not funny enough. We need a talking monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a cigar in his mouth. <laughs> No, we know say- we learned our lesson with that stupid Tim Burton Planet of the Apes. Make them with rollerblades and a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay. Everything sucks. Everything should be known. Yes. Okay. So Doug Ulrich's still around at least He's 2013. Around. Never mind. Clearly, he probably. When do you think he got paid for the license, like for this for home video? When did I five thousand? Got a tattoo? Maybe, no, not a tattoo. I like got a scrape on my arm. It might have been when I was playing frisbee with my dad. <laughs> That's I'm, what I want to talk about more than this movie. <laughs> my picked up Rob this morning. He was playing frisbee with his father in the front yard. Yeah, it was fun. That was a more engaging That came street. out of nowhere. I was I was just outside to look at my mom's garden. She was like, look at my garden. Which, fucking, every woman with a garden in my life does this. Every time at Heather's, it'll be like 11 p.m. pitch black. She'll be like, Rob, do you want to see my garden? And I'm like, I don't think I can. Like, I don't think I physically can see your garden when it's dark out. And then my mom was like, you want to see my garden? And my dad busts out the frisbee and i'm just like what a day <laughs> frisbee scary tales and six flags <laughs> what a day it's what a on day. the eve of the 20th anniversary <laughs> yes. of 9 11 yes yeah well my dad's had fox news on this whole week and they've been talking about 9 11 constantly just joking that off constantly <laughs> yes oh my god you know i'm watching tomorrow i'm really uh. just watching <laughs> man steal on loop yeah i'm going to a concert tomorrow 9 11 my parents and i were joking like how long is the moment of silence going to be <laughs> for 20 years? Is it going to be 20 minutes? <laughs> 20 years? Okay, yeah, 9-11 <laughs> Eve. I mean, th- this is perfect talk for Cinemonides, because we yeah. did the 2001 Fort year, we finished all that, now we're actually we have getting to I like how we have a file, like, we did six months on movies that were the eve of 9-11, yet nothing regarding 9-11 at all. <laughs> Like I feel like at some point we, one of us must have suggested like do we do we talk about Nicolas Cage's movie? Yeah, the do Nicolas do, Cage do movie. Do we do Oliver Stone nonsense? Yep. Um, uh, what, what we could do a nine eleven series one day. Remember me? Maybe just the last. Is there, is there scene any? Is there me? any part of this where we're not laughing hysterically? Uh, in Remember Me? No, probably not. Wait, we're doing a nine eleven series. It would be Remember Me. Mm-hmm. Nicholas Cage, was that World Trade Center? I think it's World, yeah, I think okay. it's World Trade Center. United 93. That is not a funny movie. I've seen that movie 93. before. That is a, that's a, that's a, um, what, uh, Paul Greengrass movie. Is it? Okay. I think so. And uh, that it's is, miser- um, it's miserable beyond the It topic. is very miserable. I remember. And then Rob, yeah. well, okay, Rob, this is a trick question, but the, if you're truly a cinema, <laughs> if you're truly a cinema, cinema audience, truly a cinema audience fan, <laughs> You know what the fourth film in the 9 11 series would be, right? Well, there's one 9 11 movie. It's not. No, um, it's, no, no, it's obvious. It's obvious. I, it's I, obvious. But I, I want to mention it. It's our favorite director of all time. <laughs> it's what the podcast's foundation is on. Oh, God. It's the, for, it's the prequel a, a, to it. There's a. Fe- <laughs> it's a prequel to it. It's a prequel. Oh, God, it's a prequel. Uh, now, I'm, now I'm almost. What is the I'm first film we hard. ever talked about? Well, of course, uh, Dawn of 9 11. Okay, what movie? So came we would do Man the... of 9 11. Yes. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, I, I we mentioned... have to talk about that. You're right. I'm going to do a solo episode tomorrow. It's just me I... laughing at Man Steel. I mentioned this once, and I, I don't remember what episode it was in, but I mentioned this, and you were like, Rob, this is not a movie. You are doing a bit. And I was like, no, I'm pretty sure it's a movie. It's, I'm pretty sure it's called Rain Over Me, where Adam Sandler can't get over that his whole family died in 9-11. And Don Cheadle has to help him through it. 
I, I that explained like this. I, exa- like yes, I explained this to Zach once. On if somebody can remember what episode this is, you could go back and listen to it because I'm like I tried to explain the second. I'm like Adam Sandler's style to look like Tim Burton, and he's upset that his family died in 9/11. And Zach is like, Rob, this is a dream you had. This is not a film, and I'm pretty sure it is a film. So Rob's already pitched two million dollar <laughs> concepts. Scary Tales, Wonder Shows, and Mystery Oh my god, how great theater. would it be if we got a, had a sit-down? If we had five minutes with Adam Sandler, and I just do I do a, a solid 60 seconds, and I just basically say everything. Like, you you are in you know total grief that your family died in 9-11, and you can't get over I, it, and your friend has to help you through it, and maybe there's some other shit. Maybe you find love again. Adam Sandler goes, I made that movie. It's called Rain Over Me. And we go, no. That was a dream you had, Adam Sandler. <laughs> and we just adamantly tell him you he never do, made that. All you movie. gotta do to catch Adam Sandler is just put up like, like a fake IHOP. <laughs> like I think Wild E. Coyote level, Adam Sandler will come. <laughs> now I'm also thinking, like, like you said, catch, catch Adam Sandler. I'm thinking we should call the Bill Murray's 1 800 number and pitch him a movie <laughs> for Adam Sandler. <laughs> Maybe that would be so weird it would catch his attention, you know? <laughs> Do we have the one eight hundred number? Do no. we ever get that's, that? That's, it's actually a weird talking about our favorite podcast of all time. There's an episode in Blank Check where Griffin's like, like Dave, like David's like, oh god, like what's that number? Yeah, they draw. Okay, and Griffin's yeah. like, she's just, he's like, I work in you. How hard that number is to get? Sure, like, I would it, imagine. Like yeah. it exists, but it's like impossible to yeah, get. Yeah. I'm sure it changes every few the years. Only, the or only something. people who have that number are Wes Anderson and Edward Norton. That's it. Ah, uh, yes. the only people who have that number. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and who did uh, Lost in Translation? The Coppola. Sophia Coppola? Was that her? Maybe, yeah. Uh, she might have that number. But every time she calls, she just whispers nothing into it. <laughs> every time he checks his messages and there's a blank one, he's like, oh, Sophia wants me to do Lost in Translation too. Lost her in translation. Still lost. Still lost. Still lost. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um, what are we talking about? <laughs> Okay, the first okay. Yeah, the first segment, Satan's necklace. Let's do let's do we Satan's necklace. We have awkward dry humping. We have the premise is Garfield like ornamentation. A lot of Garfield. Room. We have a Dude. printout of Abbey Rhodes album oh, cover. God, and eight I, and I half by eleven paper. I didn't write that down. Okay, that drove Rob nuts. It it blew my mind. So, dude finds a necklace. Well, dude finds a YooHoo bottle cap when he is. <laughs> Sweeping with his metal detector in a pit. It looks like a park somewhere in yeah, Maryland. A Baltimore. What, a spade? Yeah, he has the spade uh, to dig it up, find a Yoohoo bottle cap. Uh, they, he throws that out eventually. But under the Yoohoo bottle cap finds a necklace. When he finds the necklace, he, uh, he, I guess the direction was to act like, you know, like a golem, like my precious. Like he's getting, you know, enthralled by it. Sure. But his, his weird, angry face that the main guy makes, who I think we learned was... Brad Stork, I think his name was. I think we learned yeah. from the interview we watched on the oh, Blu-ray. That, that, that's a treasure in and of itself. Yeah. So the face that he does of like you know evil focus, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. It looks like those those cringy TikTokers of the modern era when they do like the you know oh imagine you know someone's hitting on your significant other, how angry would you get? And they look like stupid. They look constipated. You know that's what it reminded me of uh, when I when I browse like you know cringe TikToks or people send them to me. It, uh, it's exactly what I see on there. So this necklace starts to possess him. He turns to a demon, a, a devil, who knows? But the first time that he has the necklace on and he starts to, he's like, oh, I feel real weird. I think they're eating dinner. He goes to the mirror and he's looking in the mirror and there's this weird shot, yeah. reverse shot, where he like looks like a demon for a little bit. But I noticed in the background that it, it what appears to be an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper where the top two thirds of it have the Abbey Road cover printed out on it. And when I saw this, I'm like... She would say, this is not like an actual, like, like film, like a set. This is somebody's house. Yes, it's somebody's house, absolutely. And it's Grandma's house, as we kept calling it, yes. And, and at first, when I saw this, I'm like, that's weird, you know, that they just printed this out. Wouldn't they crop it, you know, make it look like the album cover or something? And Zach had the wonderful thought of, how the hell did they get that in 1993? Which this was released in 93. This yeah. was made well before exactly. that. Exactly. So it's the idea of, is it like, it either was like, was there even color copying at that time? Or could you go to like, I have no like, idea. Like get a, zero, a color Xerox? My thought was that maybe it was a magazine, uh, like a magazine page that they ripped out. 
But it did not look like there were any right. words or anything. And it did not look stylized like a magazine cover. Of course, this is the greatest It doesn't look like a drawing or any sort of art. It literally looks like, like a, a, one, like a photo stack. Yes. So, I don't know. Maybe we have a weird turnstile event going on. Is Doug <laughs> Ulrich maybe the inventor? Maybe he's the <laughs> Kenneth Branagh of the turnstile. Do you think that, you know, because, of course, very famously, Paul McCartney's not wearing shoes on the Abbey Road album cover, which is the basis of... Maybe Doug Ulrich is, pa- is Paul McCartney? Maybe. That's what I'm thinking. Everyone went to hiding is a low, a low rent uh, filmmaker in Baltimore. Thinking. Maybe D- uh, Doug Ulrich Ulrich and Paul McCartney in the 60s switched places, and it wasn't Paul is dead, it was that Paul wanted to go make scary tales in Baltimore. Creatively speaking, Paul is dead. Yes, creatively speaking. But it was the weirdest thing to see. And we see it a few times. It's a couple times. Every time we came on screen, like, that's all we can focus on. We're trying to unravel this mystery. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so that that threw me for a loop. I, I think, you know, so he, he slowly turns into a demon... Uh, it's it's stretched out. It has to be the longest segment of the third. No, the third one's the longest. The third one's longest. Okay, okay. I was trying to keep an eye on it, but it, it's definitely it's uh, just, yeah. So so I guess About you know twenty minutes long. Oh, the, like 15, 20 minutes long. This one had a lot of good lines. I think it was kind of like you know when you said I asked you what your favorite one. You said the first. I think mine's going to be the first as well. Yeah, the only thing that can happen. The novelty hasn't worn El off Dorado. yet as well. You know. Well, oh yeah. A, there's actually a premise there though. Like, it, like it's razor thin. Yes. And it yes. feels like a bunch of wasted potential because there's a lot that could be happening with exactly. it. Exactly. No, it's undercooked. But like it feels like if they just would have worked on it a little bit more, which clearly he had time to do based on the bonus feature on the Blu-ray where yep. we saw an even more primitive version of these stories, he somehow just like just stretched it out without adding anything to yes. it. Yes. I would also say it's the segment with the best uh, non-gore effects. I think the best gore effect is when yeah. in the second segment when he rips the dude's head open. I like that, at least because it was something. But in the first one, we get, you know, the nails growing. We get the... That, was, the, kind of, that the, was fine, but it was hokey. It was, yeah, because like I, we pointed out, you know, if you if you look, they get a shot of just his hand and you see the nails growing up from, it's his palm facing the camera and his nails are growing up from behind. If you look at his wrist, you can see the plate where they were pushing things through. The only problem though is that like, he shot this with videotape. Yes. Why couldn't he just do another take? Exactly. If he shot this yes. on even 16 millimeter, I'd be like, okay, it costs money. Mm-hmm. It's a videotape. Even in the interview we watched when the um, the news anchors are like, you know, did you shoot this on, on film or video? And their their response, uh, like Doug Ulrich's response was, we had no budget, so we shot on videotape. So he knew that he could have done other takes and stuff like that. But no, that, that didn't happen. You know my problem, though, is that like if this was made in like 1980, oh God, the mid to late 80s, I'd be infinitely more forgiving of it on every level. Yes. Because you could yes. say, like, okay, this is before, like, the VHS tape boom of, like, rental play. Like, Blockbuster's around by this time. Absolutely. Even though they're no years prolific as they'd be a couple years later, there's no reason why for this to be – especially, like, you see some, like – because in this – and on the behind-the-scenes features, there's, like, an interview from the local, like, Baltimore, like – TV station. Coffee in the morning, it yes. was called. I yes. don't remember the letters, yes. where, one but that's of the, what it was. where one of the anchors literally looks like... <laughs> Clint Howard. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's shocking. <laughs> like, man, if that's what gets on TV in Baltimore, <laughs> can you imagine what doesn't? Yep, yep. Um, and so, like, he's built all these, like, props, which we're guessing the cover art is, is yeah. what his props from his... Like, God, how many? And even the thing, like, it's shot, like, I don't know what, like, his, like, hobby room. Yeah. Because we see a full, like, almost one-to-one scale Xenomorph yep. in the Alien franchise. Eyes. There's a Darth Vader head, Freddy, a Freddy Krueger, head. Krueger. Even yeah. I think there's Reagan from The Exorcist, maybe. Like, okay. Like, I can't tell for certain, but it looks like that's what he was going for. Mm-hmm. So this clearly this guy has some level of imagination and talent. Yeah. And, but by, like, the 90s, there's no... If he already did this, what was it, 87, they said, was the first... Like, yeah, the demo game. that we watched, yes. that we, we didn't watch, we zoomed through. Yeah. <laughs> because it was so fucking green, it was like the Matrix. Yeah. Um, 87. So this was six years at between... The ver- at the very least, six years. Yeah. And it's kind of like you're telling me he couldn't have refined. It's like it's, it's like as if he didn't learn anything. Exactly. He's just exactly. doing this just because it's one of those things where he's almost like doing it just to get over. With. Yeah. They knew how to take the green filter off, which I, if it was a filter, I don't even know what would make something that green because it was all green. I'm not. We're not even saying for a green, scene. It maybe was green. it was green like cling wrap that he put over Whoa. the camera like a poor man's filter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know to what effect, but it was very annoying. <laughs> the little bit because I think I watched like 90 seconds, and then Zach came back in the room and just. Hell, the fast I, forward I button. That fast <laughs> and like, I already suffered through seventy. Minutes. Yes, exactly. it's twenty dollars. I will never get back. <laughs> at a yard sale, someone will literally chuck this at my head. Yeah, but you're right about the second take. But still, the nails coming up from behind, the ears growing. Ear, the ears were the ears coming ears out were cool. gold. The horns, the horns coming like, out. I'm I'm like that's fine. Uh, the heart get. Uh, that's why I say it had the best non gore effects because the heart getting ripped out of the of the corny. girlfriend in the bathtub, corny. And then as Zach and I laughed at the guy. 
takes a bite out of the heart, but you can tell it's like a dog chew toy because you can't bite through it. It's just fluff or something like that. Um, and then it's laying on the ground. <laughs> can we say can we <laughs> on the mat so yeah. it could be rolled up yeah. and cleaned very easily? I'm surprised it wasn't just newspaper that you laid down first. Just to really make sure they ain't rough up grandma's house. <laughs> they probably couldn't use newspaper because grandma wanted to save yes. the newspaper. <laughs> She's like, don't waste the newspaper. Use this bath, man. (laughs) I need to have the paper from when JFK died. (laughs) (laughs) But we did get a pretty, like, probably the only genuinely clever line of dialogue. Oh, yes. Unironic clever. That that was the other other singular note I had written down for this segment, because it's actually really funny. And it's not funny and, like, we're laughing. I wasn't laughing at the it movie. Was, I was, like, you're good. Laugh, you're laughing with the movie. I was, like, good one movie. And so we get this transformation. Every solid mentioning. moment in this movie occurs over the span of 60 seconds. Yes. In one particular moment. Yes. And so we're recording this in person. We're getting the lovely sounds of Zach Neighbors mowing. That's what you're hearing in the background. Isn't it amazing that every time we record someone's mowing their lawn? <laughs> yes. I mean, you can't. you got to mow today. You can't mow on 9-11, right? That's the only true way to honor America 20 years ago. <laughs> mow your lawn. Lawn. Remember, that, that, remember, if you can't mow your lawn on 9-11, a terrorist way. Ah, uh, okay, okay, sure, sure. Uh, a quick aside, I don't know if I ever told you, I'm, I'm sure I told you this once. When I was an undergrad, I was at a party off campus, and it was with a bunch, it was when Four Loco was still around. Jesus. So it was like rowdy party type of stuff. And and I, I remember saying something to somebody, I was like, oh, you know, Everybody's done it for all time, but mixing alcohol and caffeine, where literally, like, Red Bull bottles or cans say, like, do not mix with alcohol. Because you're not supposed to mix alcohol and caffeine, because caffeine gets you jittery, and alcohol is a uh, respiratory depressant. And, like I said on this podcast before, don't drink and do heroin. You will die. Your lungs will stop working. That's my PSA for the day. But I remember saying to somebody, it's like, oh, we just mix alcohol with caffeine because, you know, people do that. It's like uh, Jaeger bombs or whatever. It's a four loco. It's all that stuff. And someone said to me... That's why the terrorists will win, because we mix alcohol and caffeine. And I was like, that's why terrorists will win? And I, I was so taken aback, because I was like, that, that's not a reason terrorists will win. And my retort was, the reason terrorists are winners is because probably a few houses down another party, you have somebody butt-chugging cough syrup. <laughs> that's why the terrorists are going to win. The terrorists are probably mixing caffeine and alcohol, but they're not butt-chugging cough syrup. I know that. <laughs> that, was my, that was my quick tangent. But back to the line that we liked. We see the dude transform. Uh, it's the it's the ears, then the nails, then the horns. He like growls at the mirror for a little bit. It cuts back to the woman in the bath because the reason he's in the bathroom is because the woman wanted. To, do you want to join me? And she goes, "Oh, can you hurry up? I'm getting so horny." And it cuts back to the guy, and he says, "So am I." And it's like. You got it, movie. You got it. You, you got me for one, one like, 15-second chunk right there. Well, That's solid. Here's my question, though. When it comes to Doug Ulrich in El Dorado, <laughs> is that called, it. like, potential? Or is that a broken clock is right twice a day? I think that. I think is it's that a broken it? clock right twice a day. Absolutely. Because that – I don't think that inherently has enough – that has potential if this was supposed to be a comedy. Since they take this so seriously, I think that's them just finding well, the thing, striking li- this lightning the, strike in the But right this place. is the thing, too. Like, even as you sit there, like, look at the back of the box, the description, none of this, whether it be the description, any of the sp- like special features, this is being sold to you as horror. Yes, 100%. 100%. This is not meant to be, like, one of those ones where you're supposed to be laughing at it. Exactly. Yeah, it not, takes, very, takes it very seriously. But even with the, um, the, the wraparound. With well, the not even, I'm not even talking about the content okay. of the film. I mean just, like, the marketing, oh, the, presenta- oh. the, the literal physical wrapper that just comes in. Absolutely. None of this is being sold as and that, And we know that even more from that interview we watched where they take it very seriously. Yeah. Absolutely. And the anchors are – at one point, Rob goes, one of the anchors is literally has to turn well, away from the camera because yes, he's laughing because so hard. at the end of the interview, for some fucking unknown reason, the, the the group of filmmakers cannot understand the question they're being asked because one of the anchors is like at the end of the interview they're like okay scary tales where can people find it and their response is like yeah we had a lot of fun making it and they're like and they're like no 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 if somebody wants to see it where would they watch it and like then we have a distribution and video then someone's in New York and Chicago yeah we're trying to find a distribution and they were like no 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 so if like, you want to Afri- see you this Af- movie you're advertising you, this yes where would you watch it Rob wait wait yeah and then the a great and, answer and, okay Rob and what is the phrase that pays how does this end with what is the phrase if you want to watch Scary Tales in 1993 after seeing it on like the morning news <laughs> Where do you go to watch Scary Tales? I'm pretty sure it's El El Dorado who says, at Doug's house tonight. (laughs) (laughs) 
and Zach and I, we, I don't think we heard the rest of the interview because we were like, give him your phone number. Like, let's call him, you know? I want to hear his, his address so we can Google it or something. You, I have a question. You think we could type? Okay, so I want to bring this up. I went to Doug Ulrich's Twitter. Oh, also, twenty uh, percent of the interview is about a different movie where Brad Stork bumped into Kathleen Turner. We have to mention. Oh, I that do want to say well. I did look up. Was it Brad Stork or was think, it El Dorado? I think it was Brad Stork. The okay. actor, the actor, I think was Brad Stork, the main okay. guy in all the segments. All right. If you go to Doug Ulrich's IMDb page, okay, he has one piece of trivia. Ooh, and it has, and nobody's rated it interesting or not interesting. Oh, so we are this okay. Is virgin we ground. To, we, okay, okay. This is it. Doug resides in Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> is that trivia or is it just a fact? I I uh, I feel like it's trivia until it well, says no. one trivium. Is that the it, singular? Trivium is the sing. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. So so what what do you think about this sec? Anything, any statement is a fact. It becomes trivia when it's asked as a question. Is that what it is? Yes. Uh, that, look, I don't know. I don't know for sure. I'm just pausing that right now because hear me out. Hear me out. So many things that we've talked about on this podcast, like stories about movies, stories about actors, about the industry, things like that. You can you can bet safely that every story we've ever told has been asked at a trivia question uh, as a, at a trivia night. You know, like I'm I'm thinking you know like um, who's the speaking voice of Jack Skellington? You know, that's a trivia question. Those are all trivia questions. Those are facts turned into trivia questions because they haven't been asked to people. Is that what it is? My thought is that no one in the world has ever asked another human being, where does Doug Ulrich live? Is that what it is? Okay. So it's just a fact. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm on, like, rocky ground with this distinction, but that's my hypothesis You think right we could now. type his name into, like, the, like, online white pages and will we find it? How is he looking that interview from '93? He's got to be at least twenty, right? Late twenties, early thirties is what I think. Right. So let's yeah. just say, for, let's say thirty for around. Because he's 30. in the um, in the demo version from 1987. We watched. He's the guy with the metal detector, and he looks really young, like maybe early twenties. Okay. So I'm thinking six years later, maybe 27, 28. Okay. So let's just say in '87, he's twenty. So he was sure. born in '67. He doesn't have he doesn't have a bio. With, okay, no. okay. So he's got to be at least fifty, right? Jesus, Doug Ulrich, if you're listening to this, hit us up. Please let me know if you have the same birthday as Ben Affleck. I will add that to your IMDb <laughs> trivia you know page. So funny? I was thinking about, like, for his trivia page, typing in, like, in 1993, the only, play to wa- only place to watch his film sketch. <laughs> What's his ass? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want you to add trivia anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Right on. Is there anything else about that first segment? No, I think, um, well, it's the, the only one that ends on, like, a... S- no, I guess the last one, kind of. But the end is that um, we have to talk about how... Um, El Dorado plays the cop friend who shows up at the house and he has some great line deliveries. Remember, like, he's in the house and he sees the dead body, pulls out the gun. But El Dorado was the, the titular character, was the main guy. No, that's Brad Stork. I'm that's pretty Brad sure. Stork? Yeah. I think, El, I think El Dorado's the cop and the boss in the last segment with the toupee. I thought this, this is, was I thought this was El Dorado. I think that's Brad Stork. That's Brad Stork? I think so. I thought Brad Stork was the cop. I think El Dorado's the cop. Okay, we're gonna this is this is so difficult for us to answer because none of these people's pictures are on the internet. <laughs> but I'm I'm pretty sure that's El Dorado. I, I don't know. I, okay, so <laughs> maybe maybe if we get it wrong so, enough, in the words, and one of the three of them will reach out to us and say, "Hey, I want to come on your podcast and correct you about things." I'm, in the words of Shelley Duvall, I am so confused. I am so confused. I want to go back to my room. Why? I'm just very confused. <laughs> so, but we, the cop, regardless of who he is, he has some great line deliveries at the end of the first segment when he's uh-huh. facing down the demon. Because, you know, the, what, the door locks on him and he's like, what the fuck? You know, he's almost playing it like a, a, a cracked out Joe Pantoliano where he's like, what the fuck? And he sees like, you know, the, uh, the demon, he shoots at him and he's like, why won't you die? You know, that type of stuff. I think that's the last thing to mention about the first segment. I didn't write anything else down for it. I know Zach. Zach is is literally stalking these people now online. <laughs> I if think, I had my laptop, I would bust open uh, all the 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 uh, high quality IP lookup I had when I was in my cybersecurity project. We could try and actually track down Doug Ulrich. I feel like See, the last be- time he posted something. <laughs> I don't know how the internet works. He's always still like throwing things on like a VHS camcorder. <laughs> do you think? Do you think he's still going to like public libraries to use computers? We can only hope. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, Zach is now doing a captcha. <laughs> <laughs> Zach is doing everything he can. Other than... What do you have to choose in that captcha, Zach? Let the audience know. Uh, bridge. Bridges. Okay. Okay. Zach's helping uh, AI determine bridges from pictures now. <laughs> okay. I might have a lead on where he might be. Uh, I hope it's the Hudson Valley. 
Oh, wait, hold on. Robbie, <laughs> no, Robbie, what? Are you just accusing the Bastion of Truth? <laughs> IMDb uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes. We should edit that to be, uh, Doug Ulrich resides in Baltimore, comma, Maryland, comma, Hudson Valley, comma, New York. <laughs> Can we just real quick talk about the Hudson Valley real quick, because Rob and I are both in it right now as we speak. I actually learned about somebody who lives in the Hudson Valley that you will roll James your eyes Earl Jones. I say, I, no, no, someone that you're going to roll your, roll, well, a bunch, well, yeah, a bunch of people live in the Hudson Valley, famous people. No, Do you want to know who lives in the Hudson Valley? I'll give you one hint. Host slash narrator of one of my favorite TV shows that is on all the time. Is that not enough? TV shows that's on host slash narrator? Yeah. Because sometimes, he, sometimes, you see him sometimes, sometimes he's just talking over, so I say host slash narrator. And is it on conventional television? Uh, conventional in the sense uh Terrestrial television? <laughs> or is it an online thing? <laughs> I want to say extraterrestrial television. It's terrestrial. I don't know if you're going to guess it, because so, it's been a while since we talked about it. No. From what I learned the other day, because I went to a museum with my family, and I wanted to see if this person had ever been to that museum. Does that help? Who goes to museums? Bumpa? <laughs> if Bumpa was on TV, we'd be, we'd be famous. I'd be like, you know Bumpa? I'd be like, fuck yeah, I know Bumpa. I've heard the stuff he can't say on TV. <laughs> no! Don Wildman, host of oh, Mysteries really? of the Museum. Oh, oh I don't know what... Yes, I told you you were going to roll your eyes. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing multiple points at Zach right now. I told you you were going to roll your eyes. Because after we went to the Rhinebeck uh, Aerodrome, celebrity. we were like, he's he's my celebrity, Zach. My mother and I watch him all the time. Oh, he's Mysteries our favorite. Mysteries of the Museum. I found an article from 2020 that he went to the Putnam Historical Museum, and it said it said Don Wildman, a Hudson Valley resident. I couldn't find any more specifics because the Hudson Valley is pretty big. Um, but I can only hope he is. What are we getting at, Paul? Uh, I feel like I was going to say something. Uh, oh yeah, no, I'm getting at that. Okay, Don Wildman lives in the Hudson Valley. Um, that's what we have to. Okay. We have Beyond, to find Don Wildman. Our- and John Ashton still lives in Fort Collins. I still want to find him. John Ashton. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just to ask him where Martin Brest is. <laughs> John Ashton, you're great. I don't really like Beverly Hills Cop, but you're great in Midnight Run. Where's Martin Brest? <laughs> okay, yes, what were you... Our favorite <laughs> subgenre of cinema ever, superhero movies. Yes. Do you ever think about that, like, of all, like, the major, like, climaxes in movies, whether it be, like, Lord of the Rings... Star Wars, that the Battle of Avengers Endgame takes place like in upstate New York. Like the, the, Does it? The, I guess. Yeah, that, yeah. I don't remember. That's just barren Aven- wasteland, Aven- right? No, because that's Avengers like campus. That's oh, a, that's upstate right. New York. Because the, the headquarters blow up when Thanos, Thanos from, up. from the, the Dimension battle, Z the, the, ba- the battle for the universe. Uh, now I'm rolling my eyes. <laughs> the battle to save the universe. Yes. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Is upstate New York where we are? That's pretty cool. I That's mean, insane to think about. Yeah, it kind you of know, is. like all these cinematic, like, like, mo- oh god, momentous clashes take place upstate New York. Yeah, That's yeah, insane. There's some. I don't know. I guess there's just something about upstate New York. I remember when I went to my undergrad. I um, I told people they're like, "Where are you from?" Because most people in you know my Western Pennsylvania school were from around that area. You know, maybe not Pittsburgh, but in the surrounding like Butler or Irwin or anywhere around there. Centralia. Uh, sure, <laughs> and some from West Somebody, Virginia. Somebody's laughing, and I hope so. I hope if we any joke we make, if one person laughs, we've, we're, we're good. We, we've we've succeeded. Vulcanvania, but I would. T- <laughs> that's where we got to go. Is that Jersey? I think Vulcanvania might because don't they drive down from the city? Yeah, the city. That's where we're going. Maybe they're going. That's where we're going today. We are going, yes, we are. We'll talk about more at the end. Maybe maybe to see if uh, if uh, we might do some recordings in the uh, in the theme park. We'll see how that goes. But anyway. There's something about upstate New York. Like, when I told people, they're like, where are you from? Like, you know, upstate New York. Like, it's an hour north of the city. And I'd say, like, they'd be like, Albany? And I'm like, no, no, no. You don't know New York. You know, like Poughkeepsie, you know? Anything north of, uh, what, 125th Street? Is, <laughs> is, is upstate New yes, York? Yes, I was actually, uh, when some of my friends in New York were in Denver, they were complaining about how you, they'll say, like, oh, upstate. And they'll be like, you know, Westchester? And be like, go oh, fuck yourself, you know? Westchester's not upstate. And, uh... I, I think, you know, when I told people this, there were people who would come to me in my years at college and they'd be like, I was watching How I Met Your Mother and Neil Patrick Harris, or whatever his character, Barney, I think, he was like, he had to go to like a, a, a paintball tournament in Poughkeepsie. And I'd be like, and? And they'd be like, that's it. And I'm like, so? And like, that's where you're from, right? And I'm like, kind of. <laughs> and they're like, isn't that crazy? And I'm like, no, it's it's like the kissies from the bud of a joke forever. Ever yeah. Since, <laughs> oh god. What was I'm like the, the more funnier thing is fish kill because at least you have the story from like I think the the late '80s or early '90s where you had all those hippies go, "Don't kill the fish, man." It's like no, kill means river in Dutch, so it was fish river, and no, nobody wants to hear that. 
Audience, are you excited yet for this final episode of Monstover? <laughs> Okay, because there's a line in The French Connection where Gene Hackman goes, picking your feet in Poughkeepsie. Oh, yeah. Do you pick your feet in Poughkeepsie? What's, what's, oh, I'm going to remember Gene Hackman's name in that movie. It's something crazy. Is it Popeye Doyle? I don't like that movie. <laughs> I've never seen that movie. I have a copy of it. I the know. ending is good, but so unearned. When he shoots the partner, I'm just like, that's interesting, but why? Rob just literally gave away the ending to one of the most popular oh, films of all time. <laughs> oh, we're only 50 years away apart from the French Connection, right? Someone was about to go through this like, bang through the William Friedkin series. <laughs> They're like, God damn Maximo, Rob. get on a comic, you know, outside of the Cinemati's restaurant. Someone has, like, a two choices. They go, should I listen to the new Cinemodities episode, or should I watch The French Connection for the first time? And they're like, I'll oh, this scary I'll take that. a shower first and listen to this episode, and then they're just fucking distraught that we ruined the ending of The, of the French Connection. <laughs> God damn it, Rob. This is why we can't have nice things. Okay. This was a great tangent from the end right, of our first second segment. episode, yes. second segment, this is where it gets, we're going to streamline this real quick. Yes. Second one. Sliced in cold blood. Basically, we have... Cold blood. We have cold blood. <laughs> we have a husband and wife... The wife is wearing the outfit that one of the dancers in the faux bar is wearing in the first segment. Same people, we should mention. Uh, Brad Stork is the guy. Or Al Dorado, it's one or the other. I think it's they're Brad not, Stork. They're not Doug Ulrich, that's all you need to know. Yes. It's not Doug but Ulrich. But it's the same woman, who we don't know the name of. Yes. Whose back is the um, I only have one thing written down, it's about the hitch with, uh, yeah. with the walk. Yes. <laughs> what happens is, it's a husband and wife, the wife comes home like a little too late, the husband's yep. like, I want to have sex, and she's like, that's all you like about me we find out she's having an affair with the guy who's the protagonist of level 21 yes yes we fought the 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 husband gets on this track because the the wife the, in her throw, angry throws state her jacket throws her jacket and there's like a note on uh, notepad piece of paper which we hope like, was condoms <laughs> but it wasn't it was a piece of paper and it says something very generic like had a great time with you last night can't wait to see you again love bob or something like that and he, he goes, gets angry. Then, then she goes off to her lovers. He's he reading like a technical book or yeah. something in bed, you know? It's like, it's like, I don't know if Zach's seen Heat with De Niro and Pacino, but like there's this weird thing in the beginning, like De Niro is like reading metallurgy books at a bar. And it's like, and it's not just like intro to metallurgy, it's like expert advanced smithing or something. And he's in a bar reading it. And it's like, who the fuck reads these books, you know? It's like, who reads like an engineering text in public? <laughs> De Niro does, and this does. This guy does in bed. <laughs> so what happens? We get this awkward moment where we see somebody following the woman as she goes to a random house in Baltimore, Maryland. Mm -hmm. And then we have all the, we have all these shots. We of, get the the um, the music you tried to Shazam. Yes, which came up with nothing because, as we learned in the credits, it was Brad uh, not Brad Ulrich, um, uh, Lars Ulrich from Metallica and El Dorado. No, Doug Ulrich and Al Dorado are in the Dead Winter. Or was it Dead of Winter? Yes, I don't remember. It, it I'm going to find it because we're going to have to play something in reverse. It doesn't reverse. matter. But Rob. the song goes on for so long, which is another reason I thought it was them. Yeah. It's bad. It's out of tune. It's like, baby, I will love you, you know, while he's stalking her and that type of thing. It had to be them. It go, it is. This segment goes on for like, like we have the awkward exchange between the adulterers. Yes. Yeah, which we mentioned. Yeah. And the whole time we see a disembodied figure. Yep. This like walk into the house, he picks up like a comically large like bow and arrow. When you say disembodied, you mean we only see yes. shoulders down. Yes. And that from from this moment when he gets out of the car to the very last to shot. the very last shot, we only see shoulders down. Yes. Which is the strangest decision where Zach and I are like, so it's a different actor. They couldn't get him for that day. And then it's like it goes on so long we're like when when you mentioned when you know he kills the boyfriend with an arrow, a very slow arrow through the through the chest. The woman, the wife comes down and she calls him John, which she called him earlier in the movie. So we know it's going to be him. And then we're like, oh, maybe there's going to be a twist. Maybe he's a demon. Maybe it'll tie into the first segment. We, were, we had all thoughts racing. Yeah. But he just goes on a killing spree. Yeah. He kills a gardener for no reason. He kills a hillbilly. The, okay, we have Muppet, to talk about a hillbilly. A human Muppet. The human Muppet. Bobcat, Goldthwaite's discount? No. I don't even want to say discount. I want to say... Like, six-week clearance, please take it off the shelves, Bobcat Goldquay. Do you remember the scene in Hudsucker Proxy when the hula hoop isn't selling? Yeah. And there's the montage of the dude slapping all the stickers on, and it goes, like, down from, like, 50 cents to one cent to free with any purchase? That's this dude. He is the free with any purchase Bobcat Goldquay. <laughs> He's listening to a Walkman, sitting in a lawn chair, uh, lawn chair on, a Tuesday morning. on a Tuesday morning. He needs a new beer. His shirt is just pulled up over his belly button, and he's my, my favorite character in the movie. I don't think we get his name, but his wife's name is Bernice. She, she's human, a Muppet, too. She's a human Muppet. <laughs> Beaker comes in at a certain point. 
Bernice, wouldn't that be great? Bernice, get me a beer. Me, 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 me. <laughs> we, we just see him bounce down the stairs. <laughs> um, but then we need, but don't deserve. So remind me, does does our slasher, our snapped guy, does he kill the woman in the house? Does he go into the house? I forget. I feel like she's in the in front of the fridge or something. Uh, maybe, doesn't but he, he kills. No, it doesn't. Because he, he kills the guy yeah. outside, but he, he kills him in a very interesting way. Yeah. He comes up from behind him, and the guy's attention is drawn when our our slasher, who now has a machete, he finds that in the basement along with this. With also, a, <laughs> also a shotgun too. Next, to yes, the there's many things. There's many next, weapons. Next, next to the most promising weapon, the box of corn. If you've ever, if you've ever played any of those battle royale games, you know where you drop down and you find houses filled with weapons. This is one of those houses. It just has stockpiles of weapons. But he takes the machete. There's a cot in the basement. There's a too. cot. Yeah, the 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 futon cot mattress. We didn't know what the hell it was. Um, the cornflakes uh, crate there's, there's, is down it's there. It's a box. It's, it's a box. It's, but, yeah. like, but not like a box isn't like the box you see at the shelf of the grocery store. It's like the case box. Yeah, it's in. what the grocery store would get delivered to. It's them. like if you went to yes. Costco, so like I want like a case of sixty of these. This is what they <laughs> yeah, would give exactly. you. Exactly. And they'd, and and they'd be like, "Are you sure, sir?" <laughs> and it's prominently displayed cornflakes. Yes. They could very easily put something in front of it or turned it sideways. Mm-hmm. They chose not to. No, not at all. Because fuck it. Um, but so when he goes to the the guy listening to his walkman, he throws the machete into the ground, and that catches the dude's attention. But very quickly, our slasher grabs his head, and so I, I, I want to be clear about this. He starts by grabbing his head by the sides, like around the ears, but then he moves his hands up to basically only be s- grabbing the the scalp or the top of the skull. And you know the the guy in the in the chair starts screaming because the implication is that this dude is squeezing his head, and we get a cut. From the back of the squeezing to the front of our guy, and he has his hands over his face, and through his middle finger and his ring finger are two goofy-looking eyeballs. Like ping pong. Oh, ping pong yeah. Balls. Like, the implication is that our slasher has squeezed the crown of his head so hard that his eyeballs popped out. Which would require a superhuman level of strength. S- yes. Something out of, like, a, like a, a horror movie... And there's nothing at this point. That Absolutely, we allude to that. and You're doing it, it because it looks cool. Wonderful! It looks so bad. I, I'm sure on paper it sounds cool. It does sound cool when we're explaining it. But it looks so goofy. The dude's screaming. The eyes are just flailing around. They fall out, and then, inexplicably, as a scene transition, the camera zooms in on this on this man's exposed belly button. And it keeps going, and it keeps going. It goes out of focus. Until it goes out of focus and almost fades into white. (laughs) Zach, I don't know about you, but if I ever made a movie, I would not be able to take it seriously anymore. I'd I'd want to be like, okay, zoom in on the belly button. They'd be like, why? And I'd be like, because fucking I saw it in scary tales. (laughs) It's wonderful. And then smash cut to woman walking in the woods attacked by a rapist. (laughs) Uh, we mentioned the rapist. He doesn't rape. His pants are on. His fly is broken. He, he can't be a rapist. He saves the woman from the rapist just to murder her. Just to murder the woman. Absolutely. And and that's the gore effect I liked. Because he, he comes up from behind the rapist and smashes the machete into his head. And then walks up to him and s- literally rips the head open. And that was pretty cool. As far as like gore effects for this movie goes, would you agree that's the best effect in the movie? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. For I think, what, for what they're going for. For gore, I think... So that's the thing. I think for gore, that's my favorite effect for... Um, non-gore, I think the ears is oh, probably my oh, favorite because yeah. that's just a neat shot to see ears growing. Um, but then I think he kills, so he kills the the rapist or I alleged remember, rapist. I don't remember how the segment ends. He kills the uh, the girl yeah. um, because she clearly was dressed to want it, so she deserves to die. I think that's the implication of the movie. He walks down the train tracks and he runs into the guy on the payphone. Oh, yeah. And the guy on the payphone, we don't know what he was saying because Zach and I were trying to figure out what his jacket said. <laughs> and it said something like PG pitch or something yeah. like that. Um, Some bowling league. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, so then the guy gets off the payphone. He sees our slasher. Very comically, you know, the slasher hides the machete behind his back, unhides it, hides <laughs> it again. It, it seems like an editing problem. And then the, the guy on the payphone looks at him and goes, what the fuck's your problem? Guy pulls out the machete, says, whoa, dude, I don't, I don't want a beef, you know? Slasher kills him. Slasher just Here's decapitates him. Decapitates then the, him. Then the hands awkwardly, like, cling that up. That was cool. That's right. We have the, the, the stump squirting blood and the hands come up, you know, so the dude's ducking down, you know, with the prosthetic above him and the hands are like, oh, no, you know, that type of thing. And then the way the segment ends, which baffled us, is that finally 
we get the camera move up to show that this killer has been the guy we thought it was all along, the the husband from the beginning, who we knew. Because the wife... Says his name. Yes. And, and we see his face, and it maybe zooms in a little bit, and he looks like a cringy TikToker, and the segment ends. Yeah. What? I remember being like, what the fuck was the point of that, yeah. you know? You, I think the you said it best. Is, there is no twist. Exactly. I think you said it best somewhere in the middle of us watching that segment. You were like, so Doug Ulrich wanted a slasher thing and didn't know how to put it in anywhere else? Yeah. It seems like that's the case. I really want to... We have to... There's no thematic or storytelling reason not to show his face during the killings. Yeah. It had to be a different actor. That, that, is there any no, other explanation? I, I, I thought he thought he was being clever. To what end? Wouldn't it be cool if we didn't show his face the entire time? But, but there's no... When you say his name at the start of the killing, cool doesn't did, that undercut that? Wouldn't it be cool to not show his face? For a reason! <laughs> is there a single reason in this room? Oh. Is there any way... Only in there, the first segment. Is there <laughs> any wet reason to make this other than we have a camera and we like this sort Ooh, of stuff? Probably not. Probably This not. is called We Like Horror Movies. Yeah. And this is something to do. They like makeup. Prob- I guess we should say before we get into the third segment, the, the one, I think, on a, not on every level, Like, not just storytelling, not just production. On every level, the best thing about this movie is the effects. Would you agree? It's not... I'm not saying they're the best effects. I'm saying they're the best thing in this movie. What what is the, relative to everything else, the best thing in this? Yeah. Yeah. It's gotta be... It's gotta... (laughs) You're taking a page from uh, Jeremy when the Candyman and the credits roll. Um, I don't know. I, I still say the best thing about this is the ghoul creature. It, that, that's the bumper. Oh, that. I still think that's the best thing. because That, there's that a, is so visually stimulating. Yes. yes. And it's the allure right. of like, what I could was, be behind the curtain. I was even that's, forgetting about that. And I feel like that was probably tacked on once he had the idea of putting this all together. It feels like he has these probably in the can sometime in, like, probably Well, in the eight. demo, we have that, that skeleton creature. Yeah, being but the... it's very... God, that is very primitive. And it's, like, in yeah, focus, yeah. and, like, there's no yeah. ambiance to it. It's, like, sitting on a couch <laughs> in Grandma's basement. Yes, It's yes. sitting on the futon from, from the second. What did Doug Ulrich learn from 87 and 93? Vaseline on the lens. Vaseline and <laughs> less light sometimes is the best. I still think that's the only thing that's going for it. Like I said, I still think, like, like effects-wise... Okay. Like, the only... I, I honestly... Outside of being the, the maker of this, there's nothing to be gained from any of it. Yeah, I would agree with that. There, there's some goofy moments. Again, there's some corn in the shit. Yeah. But the over, ear is growing. Yes. The, uh, there's, the nothing, there's nothing in this that is unique to this. I would agree. I would agree completely. Like, even with Wicked World, which I have seen. Wicked World at least has some moments that just I've never seen anything else. Okay. From and, what I've read, I have not seen Wicked World. Um, the Some of the sound editing is so ridiculous yeah. that it's worth There's a moment seeing, like, 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 oh, like, oh, God, like, oh, God, to date myself. What was that from Bam Margera's uncle that, like, eventually, like, I died. Oh. He, like, molested a child, and then, like, he got, like, persona. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. looks like him, okay. like, eating pudding. <laughs> and like, or like, and there's some moments like that where it's like, why would you, why would, why would you think this is like, like that's at least unique. Yeah, yeah. Because those people are like, no, this is disgusting. I don't want to look at this. Okay. Other people, this. There's nothing in this that's even in poor taste. There's nothing yeah, in this that yeah, would make me right. go, oh god. There's you're nothing. Right. This is literally just an exercise in. We like this sort of thing. Let's go do it ourselves. Yes. This is the yes. equivalent of a bunch of kids like watching a horror movie and saying, let's make a movie. Like, if, mm-hmm. this, if this was done by like, I'm trying to think, like if Eli Roth, like, let's have this up. Uh, okay. Let's say Eli Roth did something like this when mm-hmm. he was 14 years old. Sure. I'd be like, I get it. It's yeah. the first steps into someone that it's loves it. It's the precursor. This. Yes. Yeah. It's, the, it's the origin story. This it's the is, text. Yeah. This is a yokel who likes scary stuff <laughs> and never grew beyond it. Yeah. And I'm kind of shocked considering that, like, 10 years ago, he was making, like, Christian adaptations of The Wizard of Oz, mm-hmm. that he would still want to be associated with it. Yeah, I agree. Well, I think it was, was that somebody knew him in, I mean, like I said, AGFA, I have no idea, like, what they're, like, like whereas we've talked about, like, Turner Classic Underground yep. and things yep. like that. Clearly, somebody involved in that organization was aware of him. Sure. If he was connected to Don Dollar, sure. knows his orbit, and probably said, we need content... Yeah. This cover will sell. Absolutely. That's this a great is, point. That's what sell. it is. It's, it's originated you know and this instantiated is? on this that is, cover. This is, like, you know, I know a lot of people talk, obviously are very nostalgic for the days of like going into like a video store and the cover just sells it and you don't know. Again, it's the mm-hmm. red letter media thing. Mm-hmm. The cover's interesting. Still works we, with me uh, with album covers. There's some album covers I see and I've never heard of this band, but man, I love that album yes. cover. I'm going to give it a listen. This is the digital equivalent of this. Yes, 100%. I was, I was online last year sometime and I saw this. <laughs> 
<laughs> I read into it at the time, and I said, oh, this looks like abject garbage. Yes. Then, in preparation for this Monstober, once I, once I knew Rob was coming out here, I said, let me pick a general theme, because Monstober was, kind of went all over the place this year. Yep. I realized it'd be fun to see a movie, like we talked in Candyman, and I figured we re- definitely had want to do Friday the 13th, because we that's an old-time classic. Yep, yep. Um, then, like I said, there was a God Possessor, which I really feel like we should have done, Cronenberg's son. What a that that is a movie I've only seen once, but I've said to Zach off mic after I watched that movie, I was like, either it's this or this, but I don't know which one. Is violence good or bad? I don't know what this movie is saying. Yes. And we have <laughs> what's our name? Our favorite actress doing the exact same thing she did in Annihilation. Oh, oh God, um, Ro- uh, Amy is it Amy, Amy Rosen? Oh shit, I can't. Her remember. name is Ventress in Annihilation. <laughs> Sure, okay. <laughs> um, no, Possessor is a good Her one. father was Vic Mar, who died because of the manslaughter. Yes. Why yes. Am I not- I Jennifer just- Jason Leigh. Jennifer yes, Jason yes. Leigh, yes. She's, she's doing her annihilation yes. shtick of the yes. whispering. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's basically, once again, yes. another actress. Or and I, I, was think- I, was con- I was confusing the two roles of, I was thinking of Mandy, because Mandy's in that movie as yeah. well. Yes. Um, who, who I think is the Rosen. Yeah, she's the main character. Whose name I can't unfortunately don't but that's, remember. But this is the thing, though. Very right. unfortunate. That's what I'm. That's the most thing I'm upset about this this episode. I don't remember Mandy's real name. <laughs> A- Adria Riceboro. Andrea Riceboro. Andrea. Andrea. I had the Rosenfels Riceboro. Andrea Riceboro. But this That's is the thing, though. Together so, like, we form a real person. But this set. is the thing, though. <laughs> I wanted to pick something, because I know I've said this a couple times to Rob off mic. I have no idea if it's ever made it to a recording. Everything else in Monstober, like, that was on the short list, has been talked, I don't want to say to death. Yeah, but like, but like, I always like picking something for Monstober that's almost exclusive to us, whether yeah. it be real scary stories, mm-hmm. seconds, something that more or less like has really not been on. Like, that's a uncovered. great movie. Seconds. I know, I know, it's a far uh, cry. No, from I, I think this has come up more in just general. We talked about. We don't want to talk about things that have been talked about to death. Tune you know? in last week till we talk about the Evil Dead, which might be one of the most talked about film like horror. If that happens, I think we'll see. I do want to talk about Evil Dead. Really there is a chance that it, like sometime in October, I tell Rob I want. Elves, this discussion. Okay, okay. There's a very real, there's a good possibility this somehow is like joins the club yes. with the Chappelle show. This will go in the folder of lost episodes. Yes. yes. <laughs> this is so dry. It is, it is rough. Yeah. Because I, like I said, Rob knows me. I love physical media. This will 100% show up at the yard sale. Yeah. This You're right about the man. cover. Like I even mentioned earlier when I was making the episode logo, that picture is striking. But like video rental houses of the 90s, it's a cover that's not indicative. Well, it kind of is. Indicative of the quality, but also not. Exactly. Indi- maybe indicative find, of the quality, but not so indicative many, of the content. He has so many masks and props in his house. Yeah. Why not use one? Exactly. exactly. Outside of a ghoul that had... Make a mon- None of these are monster you know, stories. You know how funny it be to watch a monster go... Arr! Exactly. Even if it's just a dude in a mask and a cloak. The mask looks good. Make him a monster. Instead, we have a LARPing. And I guess that's... I was about to say, that's the best segue, segue into the third segment called that, Level 21. You know what it is? Level 21 is like the worst episode of like Tales from the Dark Side. Uh, you know what I was going to say? It it's seems like episode. it seems like somebody tried and failed to adultify a Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. Yeah. That's what I felt. Because I'm, I know, and I, I'm not that I think, I know for a fact there's an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode where somebody gets trapped in a pinball machine. That's what this feels like to me. But Somebody gets trapped in a game. This is the thing about Lars Ulrich, aka. Uh, <laughs> I don't Doug think Ulrich. we can use his name too much. He's he's very litigious. Uh, li- litigious. Yeah. <laughs> you know, did you do you remember from Guitar Hero? There was the guy who looked like uh, Gene Simmons, and his name. Oh yeah, was like yeah. Lars. Oh, I think it was Sto- like Stormwreck or something. No, or, no, no. no. Um, it's, uh, I know it's, what you it's mean. Lars. Yes, um, yes. Oh, oh God, what's it? Umlaut. Umlaut, yes, it was Umlaut, and the, you had the Umlaut over it. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That's what I said. It's Lars One Umlaut. of the very few people I would play as because his fretboard was clear. I hated in those Guitar Hero games, the, the fancier characters had busy fretboards, and I was like, I don't need a design, I need the notes, yeah. you know? But and Zach's a- like, I just like playing Beatles songs, and I'm like, 100%! <laughs> I didn't hear my Beatles avatar. Yes, yes. I'm like, I played the Stone Roses song on World Tour 70 times in a row to get 100%. And Zach's like, didn't you lose your mind? And I'm like, no, I lost years of my life. <laughs> it was like smoking a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing I kind of get mad at Doug Ulrich for. Mm-hmm. Considering we have that uh, video segment from the news. Yes, yes. Isn't it disingenuous and misleading to have that last segment here? 
You literally are selling a product called Scary Tales. It, and yeah. there is genuinely nothing scary about it. Okay, so movie. so let, let's let's play. Even the first two have their, I guess you could say, like off-putting moments. First one is Demonic with some gore. Yes. Second one is Slasher with some gore. Yes. Very classic for the horror there genre. There is nothing. That last segment is more like to, a mystical just, adventure. Than yes, but just to play devil's advocate. He might be mentally handicapped. Sucked into a computer. He might be mentally handicapped. <laughs> Do you think that's the scary part? <laughs> No, not the character, the director. <laughs> Lars Unlot might be mentally handicapped. I, I just want to say, maybe what he's going for is being trapped in a video game, not knowing if not, you're going to get out not, or not. Okay, I wouldn't mind if this like went after last season where it's like MS Paint. Sure. Oh, God. The, yes, I know exactly I what would not mind. If that was that, I wouldn't mind. Mm-hmm. This is like, oh, God. This is still somehow better than after last season, right? I, uh, after last season, it's like the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, right? after just like, last it's season. Inex- like, you need to watch after yeah. last season at some point in your life. We have to do the incomprehensible masterpieces series uh, at some point. That'll after be the, last season, we should, the, we should not even call it the incomprehensible masterpieces. We should call it the disenfranchising the audience series. <laughs> After last Stuff season, that nobody will ever watch. Wicked World, and I want to do for Maximo um, Exterminator City because that movie's fucking incomprehensible. <laughs> so we have to do that eventually. Who but this is the thing, happens? though. So like, I wouldn't mind if it was that. It's literally just a bunch of nerds in the forest. It is, and I think we both said that maybe while we we're watching it, it, it runs maybe you know what twenty three minutes or something yes. like that. But this is the thing, though. It's like nothing about these are even like off putting. Yeah, yeah. Like they have a moment in that last segment where a dude goes into the computer. Yep. He's obsessed with being level twenty one. We definitely have to touch upon uh William H. Macy, uh Detective Gordon. <laughs> yes. Like that that's a thing. Like, clearly there's there's a little bit of Twin Peaks in this. Yes, yes. Yeah, that absolutely. last segment there is there is a level of Twin Peaks here. Uh bo- boss, we were should we sign the memo uh, respectfully yours or sincerely yours? Ah, As he moves the toupee back, yeah, he scratches his head while he's moving the toupee. That's a twin. That is a twin piece. hundred percent. That is like That's probably the joke of the. It, it's an. It the movie knows what it's doing at that point. It but this, knows that it's just an, fun is this of another the moment of a broken clock is right twice. I a think day. so. I think. I think the, we have the two moments. Broken clock is right twice a day. We found our two times. Yes. But listen, <laughs> we have our main character after him and his wife go grocery shopping, which is the most hysterical. This app, like, you can literally take that out. It makes no difference. Raisin brand is good. <laughs> As you see someone stocking the shelves behind them, yeah. There's some uh, printers in the basement you can use. Um, oh, God. This is our MRI machine. <laughs> it looks a lot like a refrigerator box, Dave. <laughs> to be fair, the paper MRI machine is truly a work. Oh, yeah, er- yeah. That is very early in the film, and the film will always live in the animal. In the a- I don't, don't want to add it for the notes for this episode, but when we eventually do cover after last season, we need that exact paper MRI machine in the restaurant. Like on display. But the right? thing though is, like after last season, is one of those things that, like everybody should talk about and nobody does. Exactly. Like it's which you and also have gotten mad at that there's someone torrenting it and seeding it online yeah, before. So yes. So <laughs> Zach once was like, "Can you look if anybody's sharing this?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, I think there's like one or two, and it looked like you know a few people are actually seeding it." And he's like, "God damn it!" And I'm like, "What?" And he's like, "That's not me." <laughs> so mad after last season, man. That that's. I don't even, I've watched that twice. Um, I've only seen it once with my dad when you gave it to me, and I remember that MS Paint segment. My was dad there. was like, "I was there for that." Were you there for that? I was after your, your your going away birthday party. Oh, okay. I thought it was just my dad and I. I well, maybe there. you remember he was too. There and he fell my dad being like, "What the fuck?" You know? <laughs> after last season's like difficult. Like it's it's, it's a test in endurance. Very difficult. I would do better with it now. Back when I watched it. Was we weren't primed. Our era of high school and me being like, oh, I love Inception, I love Freaked, I love Triple to Belleville, you know? Engaging movies. This is not engaging. That's <laughs> weird. But there is a fantastic moment where a chair just, like, hits somebody. Oh, yes. It that's, flies that's and right. hits somebody. It also reminds me of the time... Oh, man. Jeremy and I... Whenever we get Jeremy back on the podcast, um, we, I'll have Tune to talk to him about this. Sure. Um, when he, he came out to visit me in Colorado once, and I had movies on the list that, you know, you had sent me or, or other people had sent me, and we ran through me like one movie a night, and, you know, that's where the first person I ever watched Under the Silver Lake with, with Jeremy, and we loved it, you know? But one of the movies Jeremy and I watched, just on a whim, because you sent to me, was The Manitou. Yeah, yeah, we talked about yeah, that. Yeah, and I don't know if I put it on, said it on the podcast, but it was great, because yeah, I think it was that's, like... That's in a recording. I don't know which one. Okay, it okay. But I, I just love the story of, you know, it was Tony maybe... Curtis. Later in the, the, the week that Jeremy was out there, and so, you know, we had been going out and spending late nights, so it was a little more of a, of a quiet stay-at-home-at-my-place type of thing. We watched—the movie is like 90 minutes, I bet. We watched this movie, maybe for the first 
70 minutes, 60 minutes, something like that. Jeremy and I just watched it in silence. We were just chilling out watching this movie. It gets to a point where, you know, Tony Curtis is like fighting this demon in a different dimension and the demon is like inhabiting a supercomputer and shooting out lasers and shit like that. And the first thing the, like of the whole movie that either of us said to each other was just me going, like laying back on my couch going, Jeremy, this shit's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah. <laughs> That is, also, that is a weird movie from the get-go. It has its moments where it kind of treads water, yes. but like it gets insane by the end. Yes, it's about a Native American spirit that can inhabit electronics. <laughs> That's not even the weirdest part. Of it. No, Remember, it's a lot of like weird. A blonde woman who has like an Indian growing inside her. Yes, yes. And then like we have a Native American man who's like, "I can fight it for you, but I want two hundred thousand yeah. dollars and a pack of cigarettes." <laughs> I just wish I had recorded totally, that commentary because it would have been silent until sentence. this shit's ridiculous. We see the audacity, like, yeah. we see the audacity waveform. <laughs> just, just flat at one just, point, yes. And you have to really zoom in on that one moment and realize it was inside. I, okay, maybe that's something I release uh, on Patreon: the the Manitou commentary, which is nothing until that moment in the movie. You can easily recreate that. It's, like, like, it's a ninety minute audio file with one fifteen second chunk of audio. <laughs> You guys know what's so strange about that movie? Tony Curtis is like just giving it his all. Like oh, he, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like he's that's a good movie. actor, too. Everybody, I like Tony Curtis. That thing, but he's, you kind of, you wouldn't expect it from Tony Curtis. You'd think he'd just be like phoning in for like a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, he is balls deep. In absolutely, that absolutely. A 100% more engaging film than Scary Tales. Yes. Tales. So, yeah, what is there? Like I said, Devil's Advocate, the scary part of the third segment, level 21, is that he gets sucked into a video game. Not that and scary. And a ghoul at the end, like, turns in from like a pretty oh. blonde woman to like a ghoul. That stupid twist at the end, yeah. But there's also like, oh god, like, like there's something too. Like, if you like this, this is what makes me mad about scary tales. Clearly, he had access to children. <laughs> that's a that's a scary thing to say about. But like, over. but like, you have supposed to be like a dwarf character. <laughs> yes. Oh, and it's just a guy on his knees. Yeah. yeah. Why not just like? It's funny. I was watching David Lynch's Dune the other night. Mm -hmm. Why not just have a child and dub their voice? Sure. Sure. I don't know. And, and like you said in the second segment, as you're watching it, they know how to dub dialogue. But they can't get rid of the wind in most of yeah. the establishing shots. <laughs> I don't know. I'm with you. I mean, what else do you want to say? It's LARPing. We are literally watching people LARP in the third segment. The choreography with the ninjas is pretty solid. Well, they got two people who could do a somersault. It's solid. The choreography between them and the guy in like the woolly like vest, solid. Here's my question. For this, that's solid. Okay. That, I'll credit give you where that. credit is due. I'll give you that. Here's my question, though. Ninjas. <laughs> do they do a lot of high kicks? Because in this movie, we see these ninjas doing a lot of high kicks, and the first ninja gets kicked in the nuts because of it. Yeah. Do ninjas do high kicks? Do you know? This is goofy, Rob. This is Lars okay. from Lots a version of this. Apart from Scary Tales, does Zack know no. if ninjas canonically no. do high kicks? Do I look like somebody that would do ninja stuff? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For everybody who's seen Zack's Facebook profile picture, doesn't he look like a ninja? He looks like more a like a Nanja. Oh, what a better movie than this! <laughs> like inf infinitely better. So, I mean, other than that, fighting choreography, solid for everything else. Do you them. think that's the impetus for the third segment? Is that they thought, hey, we I like horror and we also like some fighting stuff. Let's put that I in. I think the end. what it was is that he just he picked. What, I think something, something, somebody went to him in the nineties and said, if you put these together. Considering that VHS was still booming at that time, mm -hmm. you might be able to get like a check for a couple thousand dollars. Someone would write okay. you a check to put that. Yeah. You, like you take this image, which clearly is nothing contemporary, put that on a cardboard VHS box. It, it's in a couple VHS things. My shirt has a loose button. Uh oh, that's scarier than any of the scary tales. Oh, that's a bummer. Okay, I might lose a button tonight. Just so you know. Um, yeah, I I totally agree what you're saying. It's a and I it's think a selling I, point is what one, you're saying, And once right? again, I think much like Twin Peaks, it's happening again. <laughs> 30 years later, somebody went to him and said... That gum you like is coming back in style. <laughs> I think it happened again. <laughs> okay, okay. I think the exact same thing. I think back in the 90s, he hoped that someone would write him a check for at the very least $1,000 for all this. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's sometime, a selling point. Yeah. And then sometime in the late 2010s, somebody in the AGF orbit was aware of him and mm -hmm. all this and said, we'll write you a check for like... $3,000 for all this. Important question. Is there no notion in Twin Peaks The Return that Josie is in a doorknob because that was not David Lynch's decision? Because that's a mid-season two decision by Mark Frost? Probably. As we all know, David Lynch came back to season two and was like, I have to clean this up because you people may have messed up. Nadine thinks she's a what? <laughs> Because we get things in in the um, in the lodge is in, in Benjamin Horn's lodge. Is this should be a Twin Peaks. Why? 
Well, I did, well I, I know I've said this. Said, why don't we get at least a, a nod to Josie being in the doorknob in Twin Peaks of Return? Because we have we have that whole extended sequence with Benjamin Horn you have hearing the hearing the noise. Remember hearing the noise in his office? You've forgotten more about Twin Peaks than I will ever know. That's all I can say. The original you series. You have. Uh, the well, I don't, I, well, no, you know more about. I know more about the original series, I think. The Return. The all Return I, is I your thing. I have not watched The Return in four years. I watch episode eight like once a year. Sure. Sure. Uh, that would have been a better discussion than this completely. Yeah. Which, which I watched watch the season two finale once a, like, once a year. I love that That's one. Fun. Like I said, we've discussed this at length in the Lust and the Dust episode. <laughs> yeah. The ending of Twin Peaks The Return that is that <laughs> that Dale Cooper is able to save Laura Palmer, but it cost him his reality. Yes, exactly. He's exactly. able to do the impossible, and this is yes. a very clear David Lynch theme. You can do the impossible, but it will come with the highest cost. In yeah, life. yeah, yeah. It's it's the wonderful motif I love of you know you can make good stories are fitting a carpet that's into a room that's it's too big for that when you push down one corner another corner pops once, up. Once again, this is Rob understanding Twin Peaks to a level I don't. <laughs> you can make. Frank Herbert's Dune. <laughs> yes. But it will be sheer insanity. <laughs> you can make a two and a half hour long Dune, but it will be sheer insanity. Sure, sure. I don't know. Josie's still in the knob as far as I know. I, I just know. wanted to bring that up. Just wanted to bring that up. Okay. How much money? How much? Like, how are you going to dollar? This will be the last tangent. We're we'll getting to our questions. Well, I how have much, one more thing okay, to talk fine, about scary tales. We'll, we'll get to okay. that at the end. Because it's the most how important thing. How much money would you tales. have to promise David Lynch's favorite charity to get him to watch Denis Bill and the Way Base Dune? How much oh, money would you have to shit. promise? Like, like I guess, let's just say for the sake of argument, he knows you're good for the money. Okay, okay. That, like, if he were to name a number, he would do it. Oh, I'm how, thinking Salvador Dali. Is that like, would be like a million dollars every half, every hour, ten half. minutes. I think, you know? <laughs> like David Lynch would be like. I feel like if we interviewed David Lynch and said, you know, Mr. Lynch, uh, have you seen or would you? If not, would you be willing to like go to a viewing of Denis Villeneuve, Villeneuve's Dune with us? And he would be he would literally pull out. Jodorowsky's book. I feel like he has a copy of it somehow, and he'd be like, "This is the Dune," and we'd be like, "Elaborate on it." He'd go, "No." <laughs> <laughs> you think he must have had access to a copy of that? Oh, point, sh- I'm movie, right? sure. I'm you sure. You think that's in Dino De Laurentiis' like archive somewhere? A copy? Of Ooh, that? maybe, I maybe. I I totally think that David Lynch if does not ha- didn't does not have a copy he, he of it. He doesn't have a copy of it now. I'd be guaranteed. Sure. I, I think he definitely had a sit. I feel like Jodorowsky and him had a sit down at some many points throughout their careers. They seem like those types of people. Th- I don't think they would gotten along together. I would imagine Lynch would find Jodorowsky. That's actually you. you make I think, point because I, think I hate would, Jodorowsky I from think watching Lynch that would documentary. Find him insufferable. That stupid in, 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 fucking in shop- moment in Jodorowsky's Dune where he's like, I went to the meeting and he kept taking phone calls and he was so rude to me. And he, I, it's like, when you sit down with another person with the purpose of talking, you should talk to that person. Oh, my cat. Let's talk about my cat. Fucking asshole. I would. I don't like Jodorowsky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've mentioned my favorite effect in Scary Tales. I've made, mentioned my favorite character. Uh, we think we're in agreement. So the first segment is my favorite segment. But we have not talked about my favorite moment oh. in Scary Tales. I have one definitive favorite moment. And it is at the end of the credits. When we get to the copyright section of the credits. It says that this movie is protected under the copyright laws of the United States of America. You want to spell that for those at home? U-N-I-N-T-E-D. United States of America. Zach can attest, as we were watching this in his living room, when I saw this, I stood up from the couch and ran to the TV and pointed at it so Zach could see it. You can corroborate. It says Uninted. It's there. Okay. It's so, there. I, don't want to, I don't want to say anything too drastic. I don't, know what, I don't know what copyright laws actually entail when typos are involved. But as far as I know, you can pirate the shit out of this movie. Well, this is the question. Do you think he actually had this copyright? I don't see him doing it. I that. don't think so, because as we talked about two days ago, last time Zach saw each other, you can find Scary Tales by segment on YouTube. That's what I found with a quick search. So if you search, you know, like Scary Tales, what, Satan's what, Necklace, you'll find thing, that segment. But this is the thing I kind of find interesting. Um, it, what's it? Well, that's on the box. On the bottom of the box. Oh, wait, listen to this. You nint it. <laughs> It's the stupidest thing. You're going to like this, Rob. I on find the, it so funny. It says, on the bottom of this, it says, warning, this motion picture is protected by law. All unauthorized copying, distribution, public performance, exhibition, or broadcasting is prohibited by law. Scary Tales mm. and Darkest Soul, copyright 1994, Doug Ulrich. Okay. 
That disc probably men- supersedes credits. Disc menus and special features copyrighted AGFA. Okay. All rights reserved. This is my thing, though. It was made in 93, copyrighted after the fact. Oh. So I wonder if there's a loophole somewhere where if you find, like, an original copy from 90, like, the copy at the news anchor's yeah. from 93. Yeah. I wonder if that would be a loophole in this. Okay. Okay. Because if he didn't copyright until 94, if you have a version you can prove, which that thing does. It's pre-copyright, yeah. Before pre-copyright. I wonder, because, again... I don't know if you have okay. a copy before you copyrighted it. And this is the thing too. It says the disc menus and special features are theirs. Does that mean they own the Darkest Soul follow up film? Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I mean if it if it lists only the it, Darkest Soul copyright. Okay, 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 okay gotcha. That. Now it makes me think that Doug Ulrich is doing well, something is- like um, th- there's a Mr. Show sketch where someone wants to secede from America and they make New Freeland. <laughs> Uh, David Cross founds New Freeland, and the end of the sketch is great because he he doesn't know how to live in New Freeland by himself, and then the whole sketch becomes, and then I went to America, the great land where everything was on the shelves, and the segue into the next sketch is is David Cross from New Freeland at customs, and the customs agent, the sketch starts with the customs agent going, where are you from? New Freeland. Where is that? Minnesota. (laughs) So I hope Doug Ulrich has founded the United States somewhere. Maybe it's one house well, in Maryland. Well, we want the yeah. United States. Well, this is the question too: is the idea that like, like in the credits? Yeah, I know. Bro. Maximo, get on a new comic. Supreme Court case: the United States v. Cinematics. <laughs> oh, I lost my button. Oh no, it was very loose. Okay, I gotta. I'm gonna put that in my bag. My mom will sew it back on for me. I'm glad, Rob. Uh, all right, Rob. I didn't bring an extra shirt. Can you handle me with my bottom button, not button? Do you tonight? want a safety pin? I mean, not. No, that'll look trash. Well, we are going to Six Flags. I might need to look trashy at Six Flags. All right, Rob. Well, okay, yes. Copyright. Well, you should law. mention that in the credits, there is a special thanks to Taco Bell. Oh, that's right. And, that, and we did fast forward, much like we did through the, Darkest Soul, where they're, they're at a fast food restaurant, which we just guessed was a. So I wonder if he did both of these at the same time. Like he released oh. these, and that's just like a weird. Ninety three is just a weird snapshot in time. It could be. It could be. Okay. Okay. Uh, they think the mayor of Baltimore, don't they? Mm-hmm. At a certain point, uh, they think a bunch of family members. Yeah. Uh, they thank the United States of America. <laughs> okay. Scary tales. It's over. I think we're done. The best it, right? thing about it is that it's only 70 minutes long. Yes. It, it gets Or unless real you want to watch Darkest Soul, which is another like another hour, 70, yeah. what, 63 minutes. Yeah. Well, if you cut, if you don't watch the credits, you're at like 54 or something yeah. like so that. So still a two hour adventure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Double feature okay. Things. So I guess, um, me saying it's rough. That's the best way to lead in our questions. Cinema is in late night. Um, late night. I'm going, no, it's way too rough. I, this is. This is not something that, you know, even though it might be funny it's to laugh underwhelm- at, it's underwhelming. underwhelming. And there's no payoff to end. There's not enough of the l- continual laughs. It really falls flat well, with the I LARPing know. at the end. Well, that's the thing, though, is that the LARPing is bad, though, but, like, it has those sting moments, though. Sure. Like, it has the Raisin Bran. It has yes. the Horny. Yes, yes. Well, that's in the first segment. We have we have the like yokel with his beer in the second segment. Wait. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like Cinemati, I feel yes. I it think has, I'm going with that yes. as well. It's I think Cinemati, Cinemati, it's it's just bad enough and weird enough and funny enough and low production quality. It barely enough. crosses the threshold. So it 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 ekes its way into Cinemati. Yes. But late night, I I see this. Unless is the thing. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna try to phrase this yeah. perfectly. As a late night movie, I think if you're somebody like Rob and I and you're and nobody's seen it. You might be intrigued by it, like mm-hmm. we were. Um, I think if you have no history with this, which is pretty easy, that's your ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the population, <laughs> yeah. and you're intrigued by if you're this anyone sort of, but us, yeah. yeah, pretty much. And and you're like fascinated by this sort of cinema from a distance. I would say yes to late night. Otherwise, Ooh. for ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the population, it is a no. That's a good caveat to have if you are so into wildly independent, obscure cinema. Oh, I don't even say independent; I say obscure. Oh, just obscure. Okay, yeah. then this is probably for you. Uh, I don't want to say for you. I think it's worth rolling the dice on. Okay, okay, I like that. I, I think you'd be I, hard, get, I can get behind. I that think caveat. you'd be hard pressed to find anybody who genuinely that, that qualification that makes it so niche. I can get behind. It's like a ninety nine point nine 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 percent no, and that remains. If this co- is, Google is there. Scary Tales AGFA, if that image intrigues you enough to spend twenty bucks, then go get them watch it. Okay, okay. You'll get something out of it. If it doesn't intrigue you to spend 20 bucks on it, spend that 20 bucks on the Arrow Video Southland Tales Blu-ray. That is $20. Well worth it. I think I got it for 20 
Well, you got it lot. might have been twenty five. That, that Arrow releases are never twenty dollars. They're pra- unless you're getting a title that's super. I like, definitely did not pay thirty for it. I would not have paid thirty for it. That's weird. Though. I have to look at my my, my Arrow like what, my Arrow on Waterworld was like I think like twenty seven dollars. Okay, I also pre ordered that. I don't know if that changed anything. Probably. Anyway, I you probably pay more. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, that brings us to snacks for the restaurant. There's not a lot. I think, brand. yeah, I think, you know, the ones that we have are going Bob to um, fall into the same category. I, I, I had written down Raisin Bran that looks good. <laughs> because I've honestly seen some Raisin Bran that doesn't look good. I don't know about you, Zach, but I've seen that. Uh, the other one I had, because we mentioned it from this first segment, uh, bagged pretzels and beer. Yes. <laughs> we see you grandma's who? basement. You who? No, I don't oh, you who necklace. A you who necklace. Yes, necklace yes, yes. Because as uh, our, in our first segment, he digs up the you who cap, and then he digs up the necklace, and one of us said, oh, I hope it's a you who cap on a chain. <laughs> How was you? Was okay. It was, it was like, I hope he finds one you who cap, and then a you who cap that somebody, you know, fancied up a little bit. <laughs> Is that, do you remember Alien vs. Predator, the first one, where like they're digging? Like, Is that the, the, the underground? Like, Pyramid one yeah, in the yeah. Arctic. Is that, yes. Okay. This is the that I have seen that where we have like the Spanish explorer, like archaeologist, and he's like, "Oh, I think we found it." And it's like a Pepsi cap. Yes, vaguely. Is vaguely. there a possibility that Paul W. S. Anderson ripped off Scary Tales? Oh, with what I know about Paul W. S. Anderson and how uninspired he is as a creative force, he I think and, yes. He saw that commercial. He saw the. Uh, Morning broadcast and was like, I'm gonna rip this shit off. <laughs> so, so yes, I think. What do you think about this? Um, we're not saying we don't want just you in the restaurant. That's too easy, right? Are you saying we want like a beverage? Like you maybe you get like a wine glass that's filled with you who cats. No, I'm gonna make one. No, I'm gonna make one. Better. That's pretty cool though, right? No, I'm gonna do. <laughs> and if anyone's ever had you who, it's literally chocolate water. Yeah, yeah. I would like to take for once, like much like how scary tales. Like I don't think I've had YooHoo in fifteen years. Well, yeah, probably eighteen. Unless you're a homeless years. child, you shouldn't be drinking YooHoo. <laughs> Homeless child. <laughs> <laughs> That's the part that Rob likes. I say we throw a curveball. Okay. Audience. Okay. We do. It's one of those things. It's a curveball, but like in the worst way. We have Yuhu on the menu, but it's legit just chocolate milk. So better than Yuhu. Yes. <laughs> Okay, okay. So someone would order a Yoohoo and they get Expect, a chocolate milk and they'd they, be like, this is the best Yoohoo I've ever had. They, they order the Yoohoo kind of like like waiting for it to blow up in their face. Yeah, like yeah. Cinemati's level of most of our items. Yes, yes. And they get it and it's legit just, it's decent milk. Which, like, like, I would say yeah. it was solid chocolate. Not even like diarrhea or mud or whatever sort of nonsense <laughs> sure, we're pull from. Sure. It's legit chocolate milk. Okay. See, I like this because I know, uh, like you just said, a lot of our menu items have the, um, it might sound good, but it's actually going to be it's, terrible it's for you. It's the monkey's paw effect. Now we have, I'm sure we had it before, maybe like here and there, just a handful of them, but this adds to that collection of something that sounds bad, but it's actually good. Yes. And so you might order a Yoohoo. Maybe I'm picturing, picturing two people on a date. And it's like, you know, maybe the date's not going too well from beforehand or something. They finally get the seat in the restaurant, and they finally find their way to the table. They, 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 the helicopter doesn't get shot down on their way to the table, something the like that. The works. It doesn't, like, sink halfway Yeah, and, you know, the date's not going well. You know, maybe um, I'm thinking from the perspective of the guy because that's – most of my dates have been, you know, not my fault. I swear to God. Uh, but it's something like, you know, and she'll have a yoo-hoo. And in, in her internal monologue, it's like, yeah. Fuck this bitch. She's getting a yoo-hoo. But it backfires because she's like, this is great yoo-hoo. And he drinks it or sips it or something and it's like, this is just chocolate milk. These sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Gave her something good. <laughs> I love it. I like that idea. Um, I think that was it. I didn't have any of the, the, the pretzels no. and the, the yoo-hoo was good. There's not really, I mean, we don't even, I mentioned the cold gruel, but that was yeah. a joke. We don't even see what they're eating in that yeah. dinner scene. It's all shot from, you know, yeah. torso up. We see her mixing something in a bowl. That's why I said gruel. The heart gets eaten. The heart, the fluffy heart, but mm, fluffy vest. Mm, I don't no Uh, walk around characters. I want kind of like the Grim Reaper guy, but that's kind of like what we could do with him. We have enough characters that walk around. He's not really intrigued. You know, you know what? I'll actually, I'll actually take that. Maybe. What do you think of this, Zach? We take our Grim Reaper character, and um, as a fun thing for the kids, he reads adult erotic stories to our children in the Cindy Modities portion of the restaurant. Okay. What are you thinking? Like maybe like Story every Tuesday, time. maybe every Tuesday morning. Just like our it's our fun. Hick is drinking beer and listening to his Walkman on Tuesday morning. Every Tuesday morning, if anybody's any kids are in the restaurant, they can gather but around we, and we, the Grim we, Reaper can basically read erotic stories. So yes, I'm on board with that. But we do is because we don't want the kids to see how like shoddy the costumes. We smear Vaseline every single one of their eyes. 
I like that. Oh, well, how about we take it one step further? It's not Vaseline. It's Icy Hot. <laughs> <laughs> no liability. No liability. Okay. I mean, Jesus. This is probably one of those stupid songs in reverse. I mean, well, we have other things to mention. Next I, month is Spider Man. I wanted to hold on. Jesus month is said, this is the equivalent of every time you tell me not to give give it away for things. You're going way too We're fast. We're doing Spider Man first no! week is Sam oh, Raimi, God. second week is I was Toby. Thinking, no. I kind of wanted to talk Andrew about John Garfield. from Cincinnati in this episode, but we'll we'll save that for later. I was thinking about uh, doing John. Did I talk to you about John from Cincinnati? Okay. I was thinking about maybe we do that as a bonus. Save or, your diatribe for later. I was thinking maybe I'd get Ben to do it on the Patreon, but it's literally, it's ten episodes of an HBO show that every episode takes three hours to watch because after every scene you have to pause it and rewind it because it's written like fucking Shakespearean essay. There's a whole thing where one character... That's what you're going to talk about the end of the he, Okay. Episode. This is what I want to mention. There's a scene in John from Cincinnati where the titular John from Cincinnati Astro projects to speak to Rebecca De Mornay in a like an infomercial type way. You know how like uh, what was his name? Billy 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 Mays here. You know he speaks like Billy Mays and spoken like an infomercial with like and just for a few more dollars and if you act now. But he's speaking like an infomercial to Rebecca De Mornay, talking about how when. She has repressed the memory when she was on acid, she jacked off her son. Sissy Yost. What? Are you sitting in your kitchen on 7th Street thinking of blowing off your head with your gun you got back from Kai's trailer? Have you completely run out of whatever let you put up with your asshole husband for 31 years? Do you feel that everything you ever touched in your entire life you turned to shit and mud? Are you ashamed, Sissy, that once when Mitch was on one of his bullshit retreats and you were loaded on acid, and Butchie was 13, and he had just won his first contest, and you were so proud of him for not being Mitch. And you went into his room, and he was whipping his skippy, that you said, let me show you how to do that. Have you wanted to kill yourself every day since, sissy, and not even known it, and turned yourself into the worst ball buster known to man so no one would be with you, and you wouldn't have to be afraid that you'd ever do something like that again? That's how ashamed of yourself you were? <laughs> do you think now Sean, who you loved so much and tried to make a life for, now you turned around and hurt his feelings so bad? <laughs> Do you hurt so bad you wanted to just quit and be over? Everything? Well, let me tell you about our offer, sissy. We prefer you don't. We wish you wouldn't. Our offer is keep going. Feeling just as miserable or worse. Hold the gun under the spigot and turn the water on. Spare Sean finding you dead in the kitchen. And as a bonus, you'll also receive his love. Act now, sissy. Baptize that fucking pistol. It is one of the most amazing scenes I've ever seen. I'm going to put the clip in. Zach is fucking like, okay, monster over's over. <laughs> but Clearly. we're going to get to John from Cincinnati eventually. It's one of the best TV shows I've ever seen. It is so dense. It took me like 30 hours to watch a 10-hour TV show because it's fucking like reading an essay. We'll get to that later. That might be a solo episode because I can't. I don't think Toby I'm Toby McGuire. Be, I can't Andrew get Garfield. anybody. To, yes. What's the name of the series, Zach? Now I'm putting on the spot, because you put it in the spreadsheet. We don't have a name for it. Is it the Spider-Men? Is it Speedermans? What we're doing is we are covering every live-action Spider-Man movie? Yes. It's going to be a whole Spider Spider Month. By Spy That's Denver. a good one. Spy Denver. What do you think about Into the Spider Month? Oh, that's oh god, that's like blank check level or not. That is kinda okay, okay. Maybe we'll ask Ben, because we're for a while. Into the Spider Cast. Somewhere. Into the No, I don't like no. No, <laughs> no, no, well, no, no, like, no, no. <laughs> no. But we are we are doing every live action Spider Man movie, and the audience might the cinema audience might think Into the Spider Cast. Is this a Spider Fort month? Into the Spider Cast. No, no, no. Into the Spider Cast. Every Into the Spider Cast. Next Monday, we're doing 
all the Sam Raimi Spider Mans. Following for all the Mark Webb. All the Mark Webbs. After that, I don't know all that the director. John Watts. John Watts. I never knew that because I've never seen that, any of those maybe movies. Maybe Venom and Venom Two. Yes. Let there be carnage. What a terrible name for a movie. And then into the Spider Verse. Named thanks, after the series. Thanks. Into the Killing is going to be in there somewhere, which I still to this day have no idea what we're doing for Thanks Killing this year. Um, I, I Jordan Downey, the director of Thanks Killing, is actively ignoring my emails. <laughs> so that's it. Into the into the the spider, spider month. Spider no, cast. no, no. We don't do that. We don't put cast. <laughs> we don't put pod into these names. Into the spider cast. It's into the spider month. Comment down below if you want to hear into the spider cast next month. You have literally no time because we will have some of those episodes recorded before this comes out. <laughs> okay, Zach. Any final thoughts on Monstober? I regret this Monstober. At least half the movies I would redo if I had to. There's one check. we haven't recorded, like we said. In all honesty, like, Rob, don't be surprised that by the time you get to Colorado, I'm like, Rob, we're going to do two more cinema on these episodes. <laughs> no, about, the Candyman one is what good. About, what, what, about Jeremy, what about Jeremy and Rachel's nonsense? We cannot Bob the, Frick. I'm like, the Candyman episode is fun because at least we talk about a lot of stuff other than Candyman. Right? But remember, Monstober is about the movies, Rob. Um, Don't be surprised, Rob, if you get... Do you know how upset I'm going to be if I get back to Colorado and you're going to say, okay, we're going to ditch Candyman for fucking It Follows? I'm going to be so upset. I would be so upset. Possessor. Possessor I could do, because I want to watch Possessor again, because that movie had a lot going for okay, it. Okay, I can find other movies you want to talk about. Oh, we're Jesus talk about Christ. on our Friday the 13th movie. It's <laughs> called Jason X. I actually kind of like it when, if whenever we start like the Spider-Man series, we go, hey, you know Monstover you just finished? Two of those episodes, Zach and I recorded in person, and we threw them out. <laughs> why? were they? Ben's going to go, why? Were they bad? No, they were great, but Zach didn't like where the conversation went. And it, Ben's no, like, cover- Zach really is controlling over Monstover. And it's like, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last thing I want to say before we... Actually, uh, of course, you know, play uh, some of their music in reverse, The Dead Winter or whatever. Yeah, Zach knocked over the DVD. <laughs> I think uh, maybe it will come out as a maybe a little uh, mention in another episode. I don't know how much we're going to do. Zach and I are off to Six Flags Great Adventure tonight. For Monstober. For Monstober. What is it called? Fright Fest? Fright Fest? Don't free advertising. Fri- okay, I guess that's fair. I'll bleep that out. <laughs> we're going, <laughs> to, a sh- what it we're going is. to a shady, th- the only decent shady theme yes. park in the Northeast. We might do, I'm going to, you gonna, might die. I'm going to bring my recorder. One of the re- might roller coasters derailed already this summer. Here so there's there. a very real possibility. Yep. Apparently the logs from also derailed. I didn't know that was possible. <laughs> but I didn't know there was a rail. How does it derail without a rail, but it's somehow derailed? A log flume derailing is like a toilet overflowing, right? Like the water gets too unruly <laughs> and, you, and you leave the track? <laughs> But yes, isn't Zach and point? I... Isn't that the point? I as, like, as, uh, as our last hurrah in, in New York, Zach and I are going to a theme park. We're driving five hours round trip or something. So, we will no doubtly be yes. underwhelmed by. So either you will hear real stories life about this... Tale. Exactly. Either you will hear more about this in a future episode, or you will hear more about this in, in an earlier <laughs> episode that it was recorded after the fact. <laughs> Look forward to hearing how we enjoyed this in the previous week's episode. I'm going to find some song from The Dead Winter, or The Dead of Winter, whatever... From uh, Lars Umlaut. Uh, from, yeah, Lars Umlaut and El Dorado's <laughs> music. I'll play that in reverse. Um, and I, I think that's it. Zach, good Monstober? Half month over? Worst, as of now, the worst month over on record. I don't know if I go that far. We had some good fun, but oh, I had some good fun. What about the audience? That's the other thing. So far, out of the uh, four movies we've watched from month over so far, I'd say one of them was gen- was. Oh God, I have a hard time saying Friday the Thirteenth Part Twelve is even good. <laughs> it, it's amusing <laughs> and it's nostalgic, oh, nostalgically God. amusing. Well, you know, if we do So far, Monstober is a dud. The it, conversations might be fine, yeah. but the films themselves are I, stale. Oh, I, that's where I agree. Cinematically, where I agree. cinematically, it was a stale Monstober. That's where I agree, but I don't think no we Mandy, should... I don't no think seconds. we should throw the podcast out with the bathwater. That's what oh. I'm saying. Oh! <laughs> so, tune in next week for... Don't s- throw the pot, at, the pot out with the cast water. No, no. Into the no. spider cast. Okay, we're done. I can't. I can't. <laughs> no. Into, <laughs> into the, the spider cast. Into the spider month. Into the spider, spider cast. month. Spider cast. Candyman. Spider cast. Candyman. Where's a mirror? I want to summon Candyman <laughs> on Zach, <laughs> which you may or may not understand. Bloody Mary. <laughs> Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. <laughs> Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls. <laughs> Jesus.